Yes, some sons of you beautiful souls. Happy end of the weekend and start of the week. It is Monday morning. Fresh <laughs> dose of magic coming around. Right. you doing so? Doing good. I mean, can you believe we are in the second week of November? No, I cannot. It is crazy. <laughs> Time is flying. And the next thing you're going to tell me it's Christmas next week. I'm like, come on, slow down. But don't worry, we've got three hours to slow things down and make it all that much more important because it's Monday on your field of breakfast show. And we are fast approaching the peak mm -hmm. of the season. You know what that means? A lot's coming at us. It means exams are in full swing. We are all approaching year-end, wrapping things up, mm. and it can get very busy, but that also means that burnout it is real, and this morning we want to be focusing on that so that you can avoid burnout completely, recognize the signs if you are approaching it, and just to make sure that you create a peaceful and a relaxing environment where you can cope in if you are perhaps experiencing that. Yeah, especially this time of the year. I know a lot of us can resonate with this, but we carry on because for those in Cape Town, Friday was definitely a very exciting experience, having the Pox Parade, the streets <laughs> on the Victory Tour bus, and our very own Lorenzo was out there, lucky enough to be on that bus. So we're going to find out about that experience, what it was like. I saw some images of the weekend. It looked absolutely incredible. Another moment just unifying the entire nation, and what a reason to celebrate. I mean, look at those visuals right there. Oh, I can still feel it. <laughs> oh, listen, we have the right to celebrate until... We have to hand that trophy over. Four we'll, years. We've got four uh, years. Until we hold it back on, we, we bring it back home. But then we also need some entertainment on your Feel Good Breakfast show. We have the soulful voice of Ilandre in joining us this morning. So you are in for a treat. It's going to be an incredible way to kickstart the week. Yeah, it is. And someone standing by to add to that incredibleness. A little dose of G-Man for the next three hours. Bring it on. What's up, brother? Oh, buddy, I have to put the filter straight on, bro. It's a Monday morning. Now, after seeing those two beautiful faces so energetic, I'm going to kill the vibe completely. Now, I, I've hit a nerve, and I think a lot of people are going to hit this nerve right now because it's that time of the year. How are you feeling right now? I want to know from you. Are you or have you experienced burnout? And if not, are those warning signs, warning signs starting to put up their hands? What are those signs? How can you identify it? We want to hear from you this morning. 63 This is a dangerous time of the year. We want to push through. We want to make sure that we get those goals and we can end the year on a high note, but at what cost? Take care of yourself. That's what we're going to help you do today. And, of course, you need to be informed at the start of a brand new week and empowered. So let's do that with the news and sporting headlines. Uh, thank you so much, Shimen. Yes, we'll be chatting to you throughout the show this morning. For now, though, let's kick off official duties and national news headlines are first. Now, the, Ministry of, uh, the Minister of Electricity, Khoshienso Ramachopa, says losses at generating units are an ongoing challenge, but there is reason for optimism. Now, the minister said he's optimistic that the power grid would stabilize in the coming week. And his comments come amid concerns about load shedding's effect on the metric final exam. Ramakhopa mentioned that ESCOM unexpectedly lost 11 units last week, but five units had already been re reconnected to the network. And the other six should be back in service by Thursday. Well, carrying on with the national headlines, the CEO of the controversial Turkish car, po car power ship, Zeynep Harezi, says the government will have the option to suspend the contract after five or ten years. Now, car power ship SA was initially awarded a 20-year contract to moor ships for power generation at Kucha, Richards Bay and Saldana. Now, the project is expected to deliver 1,200 megawatts of electricity to help alleviate SA's energy crisis. Now, the Department of Forestry, Fisheries and the Environment recently awarded an operating license to Cobb Power Ship for Richards Bay following an environmental impact study. Well, from national news headlines, let's head over to international news. Leaders of the Southern African Development Community have expressed concern about the security and humanitarian situation in the east of the Democratic Republic of Congo, otherwise known as the DRC. Now, heads of the state gathered at an extraordinary summit in Luanda, Angola, and President Sol Ramaphosa represented South Africa. Now, the SADC heads of the state say the M23 rebels have resumed attacks and are occupying territory in the DRC, which is a violation of the ceasefire. Now, they have committed to the additional deployment of troops in the country. Carrying on with the headlines, the coalition on a Canadian highway outside Vancouver resulted in an hour-long light show this weekend as it caused a cargo of fireworks to ignite. Now, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police said the accident happened when a truck collided with a parked pickup truck towing a trailer full of fireworks. Now, the fireworks were meant for a Guy Fawkes show, but the crash caused the fireworks to ignite, 
resulting in a dazzling kaleidoscope of color at the roadside for motorists to enjoy. Luckily, though, both drivers escaped without injury. Uh, Lange is up next, and uh, an interesting and incredible story. The oldest township in the Western Cape celebrated its centenary in style this weekend. Now, to commemorate the historic event, the city of Cape Town organized the Lange Centenary Music Festival. Now, the three-day music festival showcased a diverse array of music performances, events, and activities to honor the community's remarkable culture, heritage, and community spirit. Now, Lange is steeped in history, including being a catalyst in the fight against apartheid and is only a mere 10 kilometers from Cape Town CBD. Now, Cape Town's Mayor Jordan Hill Lewis said, while townships were born out of pain as, as a tool of exclusion, Lange had evolved and developed into a strong, rich, and vibrant community. Well, that's all the headlines I have you right now. We're doing in an hour, but for now, though, we move on to all things sport. And here's G-Man with the latest. Uh, thank you so much. Well, let's uh, get the bad news out of the way first. In the ICC Men's Cricket World Cup, the Proteas, of course, already assured of a semi-final spot, missed a golden opportunity to surpass the table-topping India at the summit, suffering a heavy 243-run defeat at Eden Gardens in Kolkata. Glad we've got that out of the way. India are amassing 326 for just five, powered by Virat Kohli's unbeaten 101. Kohli's century marking a joint international cricketing milestone alongside the great Sashin. Tendulkar, sealing India's top table finish now. Emphatically, with one more group match against Afghanistan to go, the Proteus, they'll be hoping to obviously rebound before the knockouts commence. Don't forget, you can catch all of the Cricket World Cup action live on SABC3, SABC radio stations, or you can simply download the SABC Plus app with no subscription needed. Absolutely brilliant. Now, some great news on the rugby front as well. We might have seen this coming, but great to have it confirmed. Rossi Erasmus set to reclaim the helm as the head coach of of the Springboks. So Erasmus, who previously led the team to World Cup glory in 2019, takes over the reins once again from Jacques Ninava, who had announced his departure for a new role with Irish side Leinster. And Erasmus, after winning the World Cup as a coach in 2019, transitioned into the role of South Africa's director of rugby, but his influence remained palpable, culminating in the Springboks securing their fourth World Cup title. So Erasmus now eyes a historic third consecutive World Cup triumph in 2027. I think he's got it in him. Now let's turn to motorsports and Max Verstappen showcased his prowess with a commanding victory at the Sao Paulo Grand Prix over the weekend, marking his record-breaking 17th win in the 2023 season. So drama did unfold even before the race began as Charles Leclerc had to retire due to hydraulics failure during the formation lap. And Verstappen maintained his lead after a restart following a collision between Alex Albon and Kevin Magnussen. Then he fended off a stuff challenge from Lando. Fernando Norris to secure first place, securing his second win of the weekend. So Norris claiming his second place there as well. And then Fernando Alonso still knocking around with the big boys rounded out the podium. And you can see what it meant to him. Now, we round off on the most heartbreaking news. Amazulu Football Club have sadly now confirmed the passing of 32-year-old striker Bonga Nkosi and Thule. The Durban Place uh, Club expressed their sorrow, understandably revealing that Ntuli had been diagnosed with an aggressive form of cancer that tragically led to his untimely death at Midlands Medical Centre Private Hospital in Peter Maritzburg. Ntuli, who began his professional career with uh, the famous Golden Arrows in 2012 and then later spent time at Mamalodi Sundowns, had been with Amazulu since 2019 and the club requested privacy for Ntuli's family and friends during this difficult time. And we will leave it there, only extending our heartfelt condolences to his family, friends, and, of course, the footballing fraternity. Heartbreaking loss for South African football. And that's where we leave our sport. Let's get into the weather. Thank you so much, Jimen. Yes, let's dive into weather. And first up, weather news, of course. And the SA Weather Service has issued a yellow level 2 warning for severe thunderstorms, resulting in strong winds, heavy downpours, and large hail expected over the eastern or well, extreme eastern parts of the Northern Cape and the eastern parts of the Eastern Cape, as well as the central and western parts of both Northwest and the Free State. Now, extremely high fire danger conditions are also expected over the northern parts of the Northern Cape and the Moses Kotane local municipality of the Northwest. Well, from our weather news, let's dive into those temperatures and see what you can expect on your side of town.
well you've seen the temperatures on your side of town, but let's choose a lucky winner that we can showcase just exactly what it actually looks like. And that's, of course, with our showcase and sunrise view of the morning. And this one for the hour is sent in by Rena Fasan, an absolutely gorgeous picture. She's shared the following, saying, Good morning, Espresso Show. Lots of love from East London. And East London is looking gorgeous this morning. Thank you so much for sending this picture through. And keep it coming, Mzanzi. The number is 0634088863. In the next hour, we'll be showcasing potentially your sunrise view and celebrate it with the rest of the, the South Africa. <laughs> for now, then, let's celebrate what we can uh, do and help Zoe maybe choose the correct outfit for the day. It's not just going to be any outfit. It's going to be a holiday-inspired one because Woolies, they are bringing holiday hues and summer vibes with their Santorini fashion edit. And I need you to help me choose between two outfits that are inspired by Santorini for today's show. So option one, we have this beautiful embroidery tiered maxi dress. It's white with beautiful shades of blue. Perfect for a summer day on the beach. I can picture this with some cute little sandals, a hat. Yes, this is option one. Option two is the stylish cotton, and this is a viscose shirt styled with a pair of navy chino shorts. I'll be matching G-Man in his shorts today for a chic summer look. That is option two. So which will it be? Are we gonna go for option one or option two? The choice is completely yours, so head on over to Expresso social media pages and vote for your favorite look. And don't forget to include that hashtag styled by Woolies. Uh, all absolutely beautiful looks. Enjoy uh, playing your part in that. Then, of course, we're going to delve into all the weekend sport, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Thankfully, Abu Yile is here to guide us, ease us through it, but he was also a part of the box returning, so I cannot wait to get his perspective on all things sports. Then, if you are as sports mad as the couple we're going to introduce you, we are hoping that you can help us convince Zoe to delay her wedding by a few more years so that she can follow the next Springbok team to go and win the World Cup. Now, we're going to meet a couple that chose to spend their honeymoon chasing the box. They are my new spirit animals. We will meet them after this. It's my feel-good breakfast show. Oh, 
the good, the bad, and the ugly. We've got to embrace it all on a Monday morning. Get ready for an electrifying journey as we relive the thrilling clash at Eden Gardens. Thrilling for some, especially fans of Virat Kohli, a record-tying century. And India's stellar performance left the cricketing world buzzing with excitement, understandably, certainly from a local perspective. Meanwhile, the Proteus' unexpected struggles added an intriguing twist to the match. And we're going to dive into some of the highs and lows of this unforgettable showdown with multimedia sports journalist and reporter Abuyile Sabula Abuyile. I'm sorry that we've got to bring you in on days like this. Mm. <laughs> we can't always be celebrating World Cups, so, or at least not yet in their journey. Before we even talk about South Africa's demise, um, let's talk about Virat Kohli, mm. the man of the moment, BMT. He is on the T-shirt when you, when you look it up. He is just phenomenal as a leader and as a player. And we love it when those great leaders do get the personal milestones. When you start equaling with Sachin Tendulkar, you know you've achieved something special. Yeah, definitely. Virat is, is sensational. Um, his knock yesterday was out of this world. Um, obviously, leveling, you know, he's... His uh, centuries with uh, you know the great uh, Sachin Tendulkar. The goat. We can call him the goat. <laughs> you know, the, Come the, on. <laughs> the greatest player of all time, in my opinion. Uh, you know he was he was superb. You know he came in at a very sticky time for India when the runs were not coming. The run rate was a bit low. Have you been able to kind of see a common thread there, or was it just a bad day with the bats? I think it. I think I, I was saying to a friend of mine yesterday that I think this World Cup, what with the South African batsman under pressure and you know it's the same thing that happened in the first innings where the bowlers put I mean where the, where the batters put the bowlers under pressure it was just the same thing so I think South Africa just didn't pitch up um, does it warrant for concerns possibly but yeah I think you know we needed we needed a wake-up call yeah I was gonna say sometimes these moments these little blips um, you know, as, as the All Blacks have proven in a different sport, you need these moments in a World Cup because as you've quite rightly said this is a World Cup. This isn't a season-long 12-month yeah. campaign. This is a, anything can happen on the day. And when you've got 110,000 fans kind of egging one particular team on yeah. completely against the other. So what does this mean from a South African perspective when you refocus? Do you just kind of let it go and move on? Or are there areas that they will really focus on? I think from a bowling discipline perspective, that was one area where we could have done a lot better. Well, I was listening to the skipper, Timba Pavuma, speak yesterday and... He says, obviously, you know, they want to quickly forget about the match, but they want to take the lessons that come with oh, the sure. game. I think they woke up, they, they wake up today and just, you know, put the game behind them, take the lessons, go on and face Afghanistan. I, and I, the most important thing for South Africa now, I presume, is making sure that they can chase totals. So I presume against uh, Afghanistan, they would want to chase and, and, you know, get they over the line. Yeah, yeah. Because they've done it against Pakistan and then they've got over the line with that one-run win. But they'd want to chase against Afghanistan and get it over the line before they head over to the semi-finals. Yeah, because we are guaranteed of a spot in those semi-finals. Yeah. The Protea fire still burns bright. We absolutely love it. Um, and in the studio today, we are going to get really, really excited uh, about um, the a uh, couple that followed the Rugby World Cup journey. But, of course, um, in that particular match, who was your standout performer in that match and player of the match, do you think? Obviously, Virat Kohli, just absolutely phenomenal. I think, oh, there we go, 101 off 121. When you start to take in the numbers of this man's career, mm. and you think he's been in and out of favour at different times in his career, yeah. um, but he is still absolutely up there. So, yes, we will heap some praise on India this morning, the hosts of this year's Cricketing World Cup. Absolutely phenomenal. End of the road for the Proteas, not by a long shot. Yeah, still in the game. Now, if you're feeling lucky, your Monday could start off on a winning note. Yes, indeed. Now, today's lotto, it's a daily lotto, and as an estimated jackpot of 430,000 rand. Now, that could be half a mole in your pocket, as quick and easy as that. Now, there are multiple ways to buy your ticket. You can purchase one in store or even on the nationallottery.co.za website. And then they've also got a mobile app, and your cell phone banking is also an option. Or you could simply be dialing star 120 star 7529 hash for USSD. Now, there's so many ways to enter, so many ways to level up. And, of course, I'm just thinking about all this money cheapest. There's a lot that you could do in this. You can buy a fancy car, pay off a house, climb I'm out of a hole, you name it. But we're going to be having all of these details on our social media pages. So go check them out and go get your ticket to win that estimated 430,000 Rand jackpot. Oh, what are you waiting for?
Oh, thank you, Raul. Well, listen, we are taking the quickest of breaks. When we get back, we want to make sure you do not experience burnout because it is real. And we'll be giving you all of the tips and tricks to make sure you avoid it. And then we have the newlyweds in studio who've been following the spring box as their honeymoon. And we're going to be chatting to them. So don't go anywhere. They have set the bar for honeymoons. That's all I'm saying. We'll be right back. Welcome back, you beauties. Love can truly take you to remarkable places. And today we have a truly extraordinary story that exemplifies this. Join us as we sit down with Lisa Maria and Reese Kensley, a couple whose love and passion for rugby has taken them from the Cape Flats to the heart of Paris, baby. Not Paris, Paris. <laughs> Their 53-day <laughs> journey, which unfolded through five countries, 16 cities, is not only a testament, obviously, to the spirit of rugby and just how far we'll go, but also to the power of dreams and love. Can we get a massive, massive round of applause for our newlyweds? <laughs> Uh, yeah, you are. You must, yeah. you must celebrate it more than anyone else. Congratulations, guys. Set up here. Hey, come on. This is mm. crazy. I'm sure there was a moment when you were planning all of this that it must have just seemed crazy. Now that you're on the other end and you have come back onto terra firma here in South Africa, clearly not able to let go of the gears. <laughs> I don't think Damien's taking his rugby jersey off either. Did you think you could actually pull this off? Did you think this was all going to happen? Now when you look back, how crazy does this all come into perspective? Um, so definitely, I think on the journey of planning, so first of all, the entire itinerary took more than a year to pull together. Wow. Um, from that being said, saving and budgeting took three years, and then the itinerary was more than a year to pull together. And then we had so many moments like, is this actually going to happen? Is it possible? There were so many doubtful moments where we were just like, okay, maybe it's actually just not possible. But I think we kept each other accountable and in check as well to keep focus and to just persevere through all the sacrifice and everything that it took. It's wedding boot camp, baby. <laughs> That's marriage boot camp because there's a very big difference between a wedding and a marriage. And I think mm. you need to learn that. But it's a beautiful, proactive thing. A marriage is something you get to work on together as a team, which is a beautiful, liberating thing. 
it does all beg the question, what's wrong with you people? Why would you do this, <laughs> Reese? Why? Why would you go to this extent, dude? It's actually a, a very, very funny story. So <laughs> it was actually Lisa's idea. Of course. So she, um, <laughs> yes, it was her plan before we even started dating. She uh, said to me that she's got this plan to go to the Rugby World Cup. Are you a Springbok fan, but like... A Def fan, and then you, definitely. then you got so married. Both of no, us. it was one of the criteria for us to date. 100%. No, I'm not even <laughs> joking, yeah. So, I mean, both of us grew up in sporting families. Lisa comes from a, a rugby family. I come from a cricket family. So I've always been on the sporting field, and so has she. And it kind of was like a match made in heaven. When she came to me with the idea, I mean, I could only just think of just when was the next day I was going to propose. <laughs> I love this. It's because it's just put a whole different slant on life. Um, because there's so much other crazy stuff going on and we've all got like normal lives to keep on doing. How did your family feel about this whole exercise and getting behind what you were doing? Because they must have thought you were losing your mind. Um, I think, um, th and this is actually something we want to ask his parents because we were at their place the night that we purchased our tickets back in 2021. Um, and but I think they probably all thought that we are completely losing the plot. Like we just about started dating when we purchased the tickets. Like, <laughs> that and, I, is and I told crazy. Reese, um, somewhat jokingly, like, you know, you are now stuck with me until November 2023, at least, because we'll be there from September right through to October, so you are stuck. So whether we That's are. Boot camp, I told you. <laughs> Uh, so is there a clause written into the prenup that you can overturn this marriage if we don't win the next World Cup? And how does the next one feature into it? Because five, we've got to go for five. And I think we might need you there, guys. Yeah. You seem to be a big part of this. Now, I'm, I'm completely joking. When we look at the journey itself, I was not having a front row seat. I was not freshly married. I was not going through any of the major emotional gateways that you are, and I'm still spent after this World Cup. It was incredible, it was emotional, and the best rugby we've ever seen being played. 100%. If I could ask each of you to pick one highlight from this journey, what, what would that highlight be for you? Definitely when that final whistle blew. Oh. I think, um, yeah, we, we were on that journey, and whether the Springboks made it to the final or not, we were going to be there to the final with the hope that we're going to be there. We're going to see the Springboks lift the trophy you for the fourth time. You played your part. You went all in. We went absolutely all in. And to literally witness history in the making, that was an absolute highlight. Yeah, it's a once in a life, once in a every two or three generation kind of a moment. Yep. So I'm so happy you got that. For you, what was the highlight, bro? I think uh, for me, at the end of it all, um, we were kind of, we found ourselves at the stadium, it was pretty empty. Um, and I mean, just looking back and reflecting on what we achieved, um, for us, I think it was just unbelievable. We're extremely blessed and uh, privileged to have been there and to witness what we did. And uh, yeah, we, we're hoping to inspire a couple of other people, you know, to go with us on the next one, because yeah, we want to start planning. We want to start helping people, you know, those who aren't as fortunate as us. For and sure, um, right. yeah, so that's kind of what our, our plan is going forward. Well, you've inspired me to look at a lot of things differently through this lens. I love that. You earned the right to get there. So don't think that this was just a gift that you were given as part of this wonderful wedding journey. Clearly, you guys have worked really hard to make this a reality, hard on each other. I have no <laughs> idea that they weren't even dating when the seed was first planted. <laughs> this is the best story of rugby yes, I have ever encountered. And I have no doubt the Springboks have heard about this as well. But to both of you, congratulations. With this kind of mentality, I can promise you, your marriage is going going to be an absolute dream. It's going to be tough, a nightmare at some times, <laughs> but it's going to be a dream because you guys have proven how much you mean to each other. Absolutely beautiful. Thanks, Chris. Oh, that just looked absolutely incredible. It actually looked festive, but no way, let's be honest, is it more festive than the Expresso Kitchen? And this season, you're going to be standing a chance to win and make your way to 50,000 Rand in cash. And that's in the Golden Baker Search 2023, and it's brought to you by Golden Cloud and a beacon. Now I'm going to get my uh, esteemed buddy over here to come in for this one. You know, it's always fun in the kitchen, bro, especially when we get to play here, right? Um, or when you make me breakfast that I'm not allowed to eat yet. Okay? <laughs> I'm going to put it in my little bucky and I'm going to take it home. Uh, so we, when we eventually tie the knot, dude, we are doing a honeymoon at the, honeymoon at the next. Yeah, deal. If you're doing yeah, that, I'm done. I'm sorry. it's a done deal, man. I'm, I'm re-questioning everything <laughs> in my life. Um, now, what we love about this little particular adventure is we've been able to see what these finalists achieve, and not just yeah. the winners, but finalists themselves. We are taking home cooks and turning you into superstars and you might just end up working on the show you never know and here's how it's all going to play out five lucky finalists will be chosen to compete in three rounds 
of the most festive Bake Offs live on TV for a grand prize. And this is big, 50,000 Rand. It's life-changing. And when we yeah. look at what past winners have done with that, bought themselves the kitchen to set up their business. So to enter, and I really suggest you do reply to the competition post on the Expresso social pages and make sure you've got a brilliant picture and description of your most outrageously festive bake. We have seen some crazy stuff on yeah. this show. I, Ooh, I'm even more excited to see what comes through because I know our creative Mzanzi can And surely we've got to level up this year. Yeah, we, we have to we, keep leveling up. It's a yeah. done deal. It's definitely going to happen. So for you, Mzanzi, make sure you include the Golden Cloud and a Beacon product. And it's something that has been used in your picture, right? And that's along with the hashtag Golden Baker Search 2023. You can also enter via the WhatsApp line, which is 079-378-9769. Don't forget it because that's the number you want to dial. Past there, I don't oh, know. Nice. I like what you've done here. Yeah. <laughs> or not, um, and and you really have to be creative throughout this journey because there are weekly prizes that could be won as well if you engage and get stuck in. And we are talking about the kind of sponsor, DeLonghi. I should have maybe dropped that oh, first. Yeah. Incredible, unbelievably valuable prizes as well. So make sure that you enter as many times as you like. Prove your point. Sandalian Takerson has entered and won so many of these competitions, not because she's lucky, but because because she's brilliant. She puts her hand up. Yeah. I love her story. Be like her. Enter now, and you could be literally cooking on this show yeah. live and winning 50 grand. Listen, you, you've got another a winning um, announcement to make sure of, and that's happening right now. Obviously, I know Zoe was sorting you out looks. So I'm going to finish this off for you. Don't <laughs> worry, bro. I'll finish it off for you. I'll do the rest of this. So clearly, as you can see, Mzanzi, it's this easy. I'm pretty much creating my own version of what you could use to enter into the competition. And uh, I've done a basic version here. I'm sure you can do something a little bit crazier than this but of course all you want to do is once you're done with your beautiful ta -da -da -da, creation don't forget to include the hashtag don't forget to include one of your products that you have used as well as the dish and then it's as simple as that take a picture of it put it into the entry don't forget the number and you've got until the 20th of december simple as that what are you waiting for other than enjoy all the memories you make in the kitchen and have fun with this one <laughs> this looks good Mm. Oh, thank you so much, Ryle. What a gent. And I'm going to extend the same courtesy to you at home. Thank you for weighing in and helping Zozo choose her outfit for this morning. And we were going for a Santorini-inspired look. We had the shorts and this beautiful dark print that just screams, I'm on an island somewhere, just chilling. And then a beautiful white dress that's almost angelic. Beautiful frame there as well. Let's see which direction you were leaning towards. Well, so, uh, Soloshana saying, um, cotton viscose shirt with navy chino shorts. Thank you. Tumi just saying option two, man. Come on, y'all. Um, I think option two, absolutely beautiful from a color palette perspective. Esme saying number two for Zoe today. Big thumbs up there. Uh, Talwando saying two cotton viscose shirt with navy chino shorts. I'm in Eastern Cape. I love that. <laughs> uh, VJ saying option two. Well, option two is smashing it this morning. Berylin also adding to that for our beautiful Zoe gal. Option two is the one hashtag styled by Willies and hashtag styled by you this morning because we have a resounding winner. In fact, it was almost a clean sweep and she looks amazing. Zozo stepping in I'm in option two. That's great. The shorts. It's really cool because I mean the nice thing with the shirt is I tied it here in the front. You can yeah. tuck it in. You can even let it hang completely over. It just gives you that flexibility. Wear a t-shirt underneath or a tank top. You can wear it open. You look chic. That's, that's the, the word chic was developed for this particular look. Absolutely love it because it's quite professional, but it's light, it's not overdressed, and it looks like for this kind of weather, it is perfect. You guys have style, baby. Well done. No, that's absolutely exquisite. Congratulations. If you're looking to uh, tap into some of that Santorini spirit, make it feel like that you are out on the Greek islands, you can do it. Shop in-store, online, or using the amazing Woolies app. They'll give you some inspo on how you can combine these great looks. Absolutely exquisite choice. Well done.
loving what you did there, Mzanzi. We all are now officially in our dark blues, but there's nothing blue about this Monday. Lots to look forward to. Of course, the Springboks have come on their return journey, celebrating that World Cup victory. And of course, they were jumping on the bus. Now Lorenzo Darius had a chance to jump on that. And we get an exclusive to see all the action and the entertainment and excitement. And then we're going to dive into a conversation about what exactly is happening with the box after the World Cup. What are they going to be up to? What's next? All that and a whole lot more right here. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> It's my feel good work this show. Now, welcome back. Not that I'm laying it on thick or anything, but let's turn our attention to the best rugby nation in the history of the game as the celebrations of their return home continue, and long may they continue. This morning, we're going to take a look back at, um, or take a look forward, rather, at what is still to come for the box. And, of course, Russi has been thrown back into that mix, which we love. But all of these chats have been very proudly brought to you by the very proud sponsors of the 2023 Rugby World Cup Total Energies. They've smashed it out the park. And we've got multimedia sports journalist and reporter Abuyila Savula now joining us again to look forward yeah. after this incredible summit has been achieved. Just magical moments. There is an opportunity for the game of rugby like now. And I'm going to try and set aside my... Because I'm very emotionally invested in what we can do with sport, as you are. I yeah. think anyone who has lived through this journey, we get that. We understand the nation building. We understand the representation. We understand so much has changed because of what this game has given us. Mm. Let's set that aside for a second and truly take on board that we played the best rugby that any team has ever played to beat the best team that has ever played the game mm. behind the spring box. How do we move forward now that we we have this foundation, bro? Yeah. The next four years are going to be probably the most important four years in SA rugby history. Because going back to back, 2019, 2023, what's the plan for 2027? Yeah. You know, how do we build depth again like we did from 2018 to 2023? A lot of players are not going to be in 2027. Uh, they're not going to make it to the Rugby World Cup. So the next four years are going to be really important. And now, you know, obviously, we are hearing that Rassi Rasmus will be you know, the, the head coach in the, in, in the interim term. 
Um, so that's going to be very important. Also, just to keep that continuity within the coaching department. Yeah. I know that um, Zandile Stick, John Davis has also signed contracts until um, for the next four years, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. So that's going, oh, that's going to be important for SA Rugby. But the rebuilding now, the rebuilding phase starts, and that's going to be important also. Getting in depth like we did from 2018 to 2023. I don't think we're going to have any issues with the pool of talent to dip into. Yeah. The likes of Kane and Mooney and how visible they have been through their training journey and what they've done to get to earn that right to play in this beautiful system. I love it. There are young kids out there now busy doing burpees, not watching us because yeah. of that. There are certain players that we're going to rest this journey on and that hinges on the moments, the performances that we've seen. Oh, man. Let, I mean, where do we start? Who are those players? Maybe Peter Steff de Toy what one individual can do when he plays at the absolute pinnacle of what's possible in his position, certainly one for me that will be layered into the DNA of how Springboks are going to play. Mm. Okay, we're going to actually make it that one player has to get out the way so that your flank can fly past you and smash someone. Um, who are those players that we're going to be resting the next phase of this journey on? Uh, I think one of the most important players, one of the key role players will be Manny Libok for the next four years. Really? Um, coming in this year, getting his first... Uh, start for the box this year, really playing well. Uh, coming in at a time whereby the Springboks were in a fly-off crisis. Yeah. Uh, Pollard was out. Alton Yagis wasn't particularly in the picture. We were thrown into the URC uh, with no rudder. Exactly. So he came in, you know, and he got a lot of criticism, and I, I didn't even understand because, you know, besides the, 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 the goal kicking, but he's the other departments on the field, he was superb, you know. I think he's going to be really crucial in the rebuilding phase. I'm not saying Henry Pollard's not going to be there in 2027, but <laughs> I think Henry Pollard now is at a point whereby he's going to play the morning stay role. The, yeah, the he's proven he can step in whenever he whenever is he's required. Needed. He's Batman now, so... And then Manny Libok, I think, for me, is going to be probably one, one of the most crucial people in the back line. And, and then when we look at the forwards, I think, you know, obviously, a guy like Peter Stephen is also going to be there. Um, so I know, I know um, Siakolis is still going to be there. I, I hope he's still going to be there for the next World Cup. Yeah, but those guys are running out of time, but, you know, it's, it, that's what I'm saying. It's going to come back to depth. How do we build depth again? in the next four years to make sure that when we go to Australia in 2027, we have a team that's played together for most of the four years. Yeah, completely, because we are now beginning to understand that this strange web that Russia has woven that took us to the URC, that took our players to the big money of European, big, big money of European leagues, all of these have bolstered up this entire system. I get it. Um, in terms of the coaching team and the staffs, the, how this will morph with Rossi being in that position and Joke, uh, Jacques Ninaba leaving, do you see this as being any kind of shift or is it going to just be a continuation of, of what we've been seeing? Who do we bring in to replace Jacques if Rossi is an interim? No, definitely. I, think, I, I don't think it's going to have a, a huge impact on the team. I think it's just going to be business as usual. Obviously, Jacques is a massive loss to SA Rap, not even to the team alone. But I think he was also offering his services to the lower teams, being the high-performance manager in SA Rugby. So I think, you know, the next person to come in as a defence coach for the box, you know, he has a handful. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> so, but, but then I think, obviously, it's just going to be business as usual. I hope to see Dwayne coming in um, as sort of, you know, being integrated a as, mentor, uh, yeah. as in the, in the defensive system. But, you know, I think it's just going to be business as usual. I, you know, Rassi has a plan. You know, they, they do everything with, with, with the future in mind. And, you know, we've seen that. Uh, one one name. That's all I want from you now. Who was the most impressive Springbok through this campaign that you are going to be heartbroken to say goodbye to? Uh, it's probably one of the most talented players that have, you know, worn the, the Springbok jersey. I think it's Henry Pollard. Um, um, he was superb. He was came, sublime, yeah. Yeah, he came in at a time. I think without Henry Pollard, no disrespect to Manny Lipok, but I think without Henry Pollard, we don't win the World Cup. Wow. Yeah, and he stepped up, as we have seen him do so many times. Incredible stuff. Well, the World Cup may be over, but Total Energy Service stations ain't going nowhere. You can still step in, top up on fuel, bry, charcoal, fire lighters, snacks and drinks, everything we need for our summer. And with club points that can be earned and redeemed for cash back, it'll help you save on those future purchases. So stop by whether you're watching sport or not. Just like in rugby, it's uniting our energies that helps us move forward.
Oh, Cape Town was a sea of oh, yeah. green and gold, ignited by jubilation as the Springboks took the Webb Ellis Trophy on a parade throughout the streets. Yeah, now Fafta Clack was daring, uh, his daring reveal of his iconic flag branded Speedo, and of course, Sia Khaleesi's triumphant cup display it definitely was part of setting the city abuzz. But the excitement doesn't stop there because our very own producer, yes, the sports producer Lorenzo Darius, is taking us on an exclusive behind the scenes journey with the Springboks on their victory tour around Cape Town. Oh, it's going to be good. We're out here at City Hall today for an historic moment. The Springboks have arrived back from Paris with the William Webb Ellis Trophy. It's their fourth championship that they've won, their second consecutive. And we're definitely looking forward to seeing Sia and the boys parading the trophy throughout Cape Town. As you can see, the crowds are here. Everyone coming out to support the boys and enjoy this historic moment. A win like this just shows how good South African rugby is as a, as a team and how diversified and how well we work together. So uh, he sent out a good message to the country and, and it is possible to work together and achieve a brighter future. So for us, it's just going day by day, making sure we look forward to, to creating a better future for everyone. and. Uh, creating a bit of hope and unity in, in the country. For me, it was a massive milestone. I think it doesn't happen often where you, where you become a double world champ. And for me personally, it was massive on my bucket list after 2019. Um, and just to, to be part of such an awesome team um, and get an opportunity to play in, in the second World Cup and actually going through and winning it was, was an unbelievable achievement in my, in my eyes. It's amazing. It set me two years ago when I arrived back to Africa. I'll, I'll stand here with a World Cup medal. I would have lost, but yeah, but I'm, I'm very happy and I'm glad and, and fortunate to be in this position. Yeah. I think you can just see see all the support, uh, especially support over social media during the World Cup as well. I think that was uh, phenomenal and that's definitely a thing that, that drove us as well, uh, especially in the, in the knockout phases at the end. For us, this is everything. This is why we work our hard work so we can see people will be like this, but the, we know like this excitement is going to be short-lived. It's not going to be going on for long. We're hoping what we did does more than just celebrate, you know. There's so much that needs to be done, but us as players too, we have opportunities, we have platforms, we have sponsors. We can, we can do more, you know. So, yeah, I think it's time for us to use this in the right manner, in the right direction. Oh, it's gonna be a waste, you know. It's gonna be a waste. But I did, I do hope it did inspire one or two people who were in a place where they thought they couldn't make it because of the circumstances. So yeah. The crowd has come out. South Africans are here to celebrate with Sia and the boys. And we are here to enjoy this moment and just have a look and see. It's everything that a fairy tale needs. Oh, Did you manage on. to see the bus go Sneaky past? Sneaky mission, yeah, it was so cool. The atmosphere was incredible. It's literally such a privilege and a blessing to see how an entire country just unifies and comes to life in that way. Oh, thank you, Springboks. Honestly, we all needed this so badly and you over, over delivered. That one's just oh, special. Incredible. Well, listen, as the Springboks bid farewell to Cape Town, their victory tour continued through Durban and East London this past weekend. And for those in other parts of the cities in South African cities don't fret because satellite tours to places like Bloemfontein and Nelson Mandela Bay are in the works with exciting plans already in motion for 2024. Nice. So the party's going to continue until next year. Oh, when it hits Sweden. When it gets there, that is what I want to see. It's just dawned on me when I eventually do get to see Sia, I am going to cry my eyes out, so just forgive me. That moment's coming. Now, Alandre and I have been working on a beautiful little number, and I thought I'd set... No, I'm joking completely. Um, but Alandre is here to perform just for you, and it's a banger. Asa Blith is on the way after the break. Then if you are approaching burnout in your matric exam story, we're going to change to the next chapter. Stick around. We've got some great help on the way.
It's my feel good breakfast show. Oh, yes, Simzanzi, welcome to it. It's time to be entertained. Let's bring in another superstar. We're talking about the one and only Elandre in the building! Hey, hey, hey. Yes, this man is a singer, a songwriter, someone who believed in himself at the young age of 19 years old. And then he decided to go after his dreams and showcase his talents in the music industry. And we are so grateful for that. Now, he's just released new music, and I cannot wait to hear more about it. Elandre, how are you doing this morning, bro? Better than ever. Oh. <laughs> so, so, so good. Good to be here. Yeah, talk to me about this new single. I love celebrating new music. We've got a new setup for you just for the occasion, so this is perfect for it. But talk to me behind the meaning and the inspiration behind this one. Also, Blue was the first song I kind of pitched to the rest of the, the group to, when I decided that there was going to be an album. Um, we released two tracks called Hand in Hand and Leaf Like About. Oh, man, I just can't help but notice the sultry depth in your voice is insane. Like you talk at like another octave. Is that, can you go any lower than that even? <laughs> um, I, I, I've, uh, in the morning, I am. <laughs> in the morning, it's bright yeah. and early, we understand. <laughs> Listen, man, and it doesn't stop at the single, man, because you've also got this new body of work that's being released, Aesthetica, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. <laughs> what is this all about, man? This is so, so exciting. Never mind a single, but an entire body of work. What's the inspiration behind that, and why decide to put all this together? I've always loved albums, and I love to bring things out in, in, in its entirety, to bring out a body of work. Yeah. And so it was a bit of a, a, um, a convincing to do it, to get my team on board. but. I listen to music in album form and I felt the story and the thank you that I want to give to bands like FL and Malkdat Kumiski and Glaskas, who are predominantly where I'm from, the Eastern Cape. Those, the music that they made has always stuck with me. So um, we wrote a 13 track, all Afrikaans album, and I'm doing some, um, some duets with some of my heroes in there. I think the last albums that we made, a lot of them we used to reference a lot of English music and mm. pop and mm. rock and jazz and blues. With this album we went Afrikaans and we listened to Afrikaans music and, and yeah, we analyzed what it gave me and this is what I gave to it now. I love that. It's almost like an ode to where things have begun and now this is a testament and celebrating all that encompasses you and I think this is being true to yourself, which we absolutely love. So this is what it's about, I'm Zanzi, and without further ado, it is that time. This man's performing his hot new track. This is Elandre with... Oh, stay tuned to your Feel Good Broke for show. More from Eliandre later throughout the morning. Well, let's take a look at those national headlines. A 27-year-old suspect is expected to appear in the Pretoria Magistrates Court today after he was arrested with copper valued at some 50 million rand. The arrest followed a tip-off received by the Hawks about a syndicate allegedly involved in criminal activities, including dealing with selling copper in the city. They swooped on a property in Pretoria's Boyson Street where they found the owner who indicated that he'd bought copper at an auction in Bloemfontein. Copper valued at some 50 million rand was confiscated. And staying with our local news, the Minister of Electricity, Josinso Ramakopa, says losses at generating units are an ongoing challenge, but there's reason for optimism. The minister said he's optimistic that the power grid would stabilise in the coming week. His comments came amid concerns about load shedding's effect on the matric final exam. Ramakopa mentioned that ESCOM unexpectedly lost 11 units last week, but five units had already been reconnected to the network and the other six would be back to service by Thursday. Moving to news abroad, Israel yesterday rejected growing calls for a ceasefire in Gaza. Military specialists say Israeli forces are intensifying their operations against Palestinian Islamist group Hamas. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has demanded that all of about 240 hostages captured by Hamas during the October 7 attacks on Israel be returned. Israel's military has issued a combination of ground troops together with air and navy power to pound Gaza and consolidate its incursions into the narrow coastal strip amid to destroy, aiming rather, to destroy Hamas. Some 9,700 people have been killed in Gaza since the 7th of October. And leaders of the Southern African Development Community have expressed concern about the security and humanitarian situation in the east of the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Heads of state gathered at an extraordinary summit in Luanda, Angola. 
President Cyril Ramaphosa represented South Africa. The SADC heads of state say the M23 rebel have, rebels rather, have resumed attacks and are occupying territory in the DRC, which is a violation of the ceasefire. They have committed to the additional deployment of troops in the country. And for some light-hearted news, an adorable blind cockapoo pu puppy named Darwin has learned to navigate life without sight thanks to an incredible team at a dog school in Hertfordshire in the UK. Staff at Dogs Trust Dog School, where Darwin was born in October 2022, said they needed a, to adopt their, in fact, adapt their training methods after discovering he was completely blind. Charlotte Valencia, a coach at the school, said that working on verbal cues was important. Clear sounds were used that Darwin could easily pick up on, as well as using tasty treats as a guide. After successfully graduating from dog school at the age of nine months, Darwin has found his forever home with Bethany Gottbert. Well, on that note, that's where I leave your morning headlines. Let's take another look at your sport. Uh, thank you, Zoe. Sorry to kill the buzz after that beautiful story, but we've got to start with the cricket first. And in the ICC Men's Cricket World Cup yesterday, the Proteas already assured of a semi-final spot, thankfully missed an opportunity to surpass India at the top of the table, suffering a massive loss. 243-run defeat, in fact, at Eden Gardens in Kolkata. So India amassing 326 for just five, and that was predominantly powered by Virat Kohli's unbeaten 101, so well measured. Kohli's century marking a a joint international cricketing milestone alongside the GOAT, Sachin Tendulkar, sealing India's top table finish. So with one more group match left to go up against the highest scoring Afghanistan, the Proteas aim to rebound, obviously, before the knockouts commence. And don't forget, you can catch all of the cricket action from the World Cup live on SABC3 on SABC radio stations, or you can simply download the brilliant SABC Plus app, which is great, and no subscription is needed. It's free, baby. Now let's talk about rugby once again. And he is back. Not that he ever left. Rossi Erasmus is set to now reclaim the helm as the head coach of the Springboks. So Erasmus, who previously led the team to World Cup glory in 2019, of course, takes over from Jacques Nenaba, his understudy, who had announced his departure for a new role with Irish side Leinster. And Erasmus, after winning the World Cup as a coach in 2019, transitioned into the role of South Africa's director of rugby to keep him in the fold. But his influence clearly remained palpable on the field, culminating in the Springboks securing their fourth World Cup, their history-making World Cup title. So Rasmus now eyes a historic third consecutive World Cup triumph in 2027. I think he'll stick around for that. Then we turn to motorsport, and he's done it again. Max Verstappen showcased his prowess behind the wheel with a commanding victory at the Sao Paulo Grand Prix, marking his record-breaking 17 win in the 2023 season and it was not without drama in fact it unfolded even before the race began as Charles Leclerc had to retire due to hydraulics failure during the formation lap then Verstappen maintained his lead after a restart following a collision between himself and Alex Albon and Kevin Magnussen and then he fended off a very fierce challenge from Lando Norris who really has stepped up this season to secure first place securing his second win of the weekend Norris claiming second and then Fernando Alonso still knocking around with the the big boys, he rounded off the podium, and you can see what it meant to the driver. Now we round off with the worst kind of story and a heartbreaking knock-on for South African football. Amazulu Footballing Club there have sadly confirmed the passing of 32-year-old striker Bongen Korsi and Thule. Durban Club, they expressed their sorrow, understandably revealing that Ntuli had been diagnosed with an aggressive form of cancer that tragically led to his untimely death at the Midlands Medical Center, their private hospital in Pina Maritzburg. Ntuli, who began his professional career with Golden Arrows in 2012 and then spent some time with Mamalodi Sundowns had been with Amazulu since 2019. And the club have requested privacy for Ntuli's family and friends during this difficult time. So we will leave it just there, only extending our condolences, our heartfelt love and sorrow to his family, friends, and of course the footballing fraternity here in South Africa. Thank you so much, G-Man. Let's dive into the traffic this morning and see how we can serve you. And starting off in Johannesburg, Germiston. Now, there are roadworks on the N3 northbound before Van Buren, and the left lane is closed. So you can expect delays, so do, do allow for more travel time 
when you're passing through this area. Moving over to Pretoria now, and there has been a multi-vehicle accident on the N1 southbound. Now, this after Proof Plus Interchange, and this is on the shoulder lane, which is closed. So, again, if you're in the area, drive carefully. And for anybody heading out on the roads this morning, buckle up, stay safe, and plan your routes accordingly. For now, though, let's head from the roads to the sky and see what's happening in the latest when it comes to weather. Diving straight into weather news now, and the SA Weather Service has issued a yellow level 2 warning, and that's for severe thunderstorms resulting in strong winds, heavy downpours, and large hail expected over the extreme eastern parts of the Northern Cape and the eastern parts of the Eastern Cape, as well as the central and western parts of both Northwest and the Free State. Now, on top of this, extremely high fire danger conditions are also expected over the northern parts of the Northern Cape and the moses Kotane local municipality of the Northwest. Well, from our weather news, let's dive into those temperatures and see what you can expect on your side of town. Although it's that hour once again, you've seen the temperatures, but let's see one of our winning pictures of this morning for the sunrise view of the hour. Now, we've got an incredible shot. This one sent in from Atlantis by Renique or Renika Davids. I'm not sure how to pronounce it exactly, but this is an incredible shot. She says, the breathtakingly beautiful orange tones displayed this morning sky. It is just amazing. And, oh, this picture is just that, encapsulating everything we need to give us the energy for the week, for this Monday, and for your feel-good breakfast show. Thank you so much for sending it in. We'll do it once more in the next hour, but this is what it's all about. Thank you so much, Mzanzi. 063-408-8863 and we'll see one more picture in an hour. Oh, thank you, Mr. Ryle Demorne. Well, listen, summer is here, and what's very exciting is Woolworths, they want to show you. In fact, they want to show, they want you to show them your energy, your spark, and most importantly, your confidence. And you could be part of their next re-denim campaign. They're looking for real people, yeah. so this is your chance to show South Africa what makes you you. Even though I think South Africans, we're all unreal, but we want to see the authentic version of yourself. And those applications are now open. So this is how you do it. You've got to upload a video of yourself that best demonstrates your confidence. Hashtag re show them attitude to TikTok. Okay, that's the chosen platform. We're going to make you a star. And you've got to use that hashtag up on your screen. R-E-X, show them, re show them. And then tag at Woolworths underscore SA so they know who you're talking to and then qualify for that entry to qualify, you've got to ensure that the post that you post and upload this to a public platform. We want the mm. world to embrace you. Alternatively, you can submit your entry via their dedicated WhatsApp line to the following number. That's 071-295-1485. And just follow the easy prompts to submit your entry. Oh, what a great way to be part right. of a wonderful brand. The entries will close on Friday, this coming Friday, the 10th of November at 5 p.m. So you've got this whole week to get your content Content ready, those T's and C's do apply and it can be found on our website, expressoshow.com. Just be you. Just you. Oh, great stuff. Now, of course, you know the theme of the show this morning. It's approaching that time of the year when we are verging on burnout. So we're going to dive into this conversation and help you avoid burnout. And then on top of this, also dive into a conversation about sleep. Why it is so important, not only for everybody, but especially for our matrix right now that are about to write the exams. Why is sleep so important? That and avoiding burnout in just a bit. Don't go anywhere, Mzanzi.
Welcome back. It is your Feel Good Breakfast show, and now we are getting into the nitty and gritty of things. Now, as we head into the peak season of school and work, many of us experience burnout. It's important to find ways in which we can deal with burnout to push till the end of the year. And with the matriculants writing their final exams, this information is super important for you to stay on top of their game without buckling to the emotional and mental pressures of studying. Now we have educational psychologist, Dr. Sharon Aiken back in studio as she unpacks her knowledge with us. Dr. Sharon, this is something that is, I think, so important for us to talk about because once you experience burnout, mm. you need to experience it once in order to realize what the signs and symptoms are to look out for. Now, let's talk about not just the matriculants, but scholars studying, students at university studying for your end exams. Burnout is real, especially mm. academic burnout. What are some of those signs and symptoms parents and the students themselves need to be aware of that, hang on, I'm experiencing it right now. Okay, so I want to break that up into two sections. So I want to have a look at pre-burnout and I want to have a look at the actual burnout. Okay. So when you get the actual burnout, you're literally exhausted and you cannot, sometimes you can't even get out of bed. And the thought of studying is just terrible. You're exhausted. It's like you a dead bank. cell phone battery exactly. that won't recharge. It, it, it even, it, it sort of looks a little bit like depressed mood, but it's not quite the same. But before you get to that burnout stage, you will see the children, the parents can see the children going through stress. So particularly, if you've got a really quiet child, what will happen is they'll become more and more and more quiet, 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 quiet. And then when the stress gets too much, they're gonna start blowing up at what appears to be insignificant things, but that's because they've been suppressing their anxiety. Your more extroverted kids tend to vent, 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 and then they go very quiet. Oh. So when you see a change in behavior that's quite significant, that's when parents need to actually intervene immediately there, go see the GP. Um, if the child has a therapist, immediately contact the therapist and get it under control before it reaches burnout. Okay, so intervene beforehand. Intervene before the candle is out. Is yes. That what you say? When you're seeing those anxiety levels go and the unusual behavior in your child, that's when you intervene. Now, how do we find that perfect sweet spot between sticking to your studying schedule, but also then avoiding the, the tip of the scale where you reach burnout? Because you need to get through the work and you've got exams, that's a set timetable. That is true. So you, if you've been a diligent student, um, during this period, now you are literally just doing revision and, and so that's not gonna be too much of an issue. If you have unfortunately not been a diligent student through the year, then now you cram learning and mm. then you're trying to push long hours. But what I'd like to say is if you're gonna push long hours, then what you really have to focus on is as much balance as possible. So you want to be getting your eight to 10 hours of sleep a night. I hope that's right. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's right. Sleep. <laughs> um, sleep is important. Eating healthily is important. Exercise, exercise, exercise. So, so many of the kids actually were exercising really vigorously during the year, maybe playing hockey and rugby and all those sports, and then all of a sudden they feel they don't have time for that. But mm. if they don't actually exercise, they're not gonna get rid of the anxiety that's building up. So, yes, you need your set schedule, but you need a good eight to 10 hours of sleep. You cannot write an exam effectively on three hours of sleep. No, you can't. So. I would say eight to nine hours of studying, have some relaxation, time out. Yeah, eat go. healthily, but yeah. sneak a little. <laughs> sneak a little treat in there, yes. make it exciting. <laughs> now, something I learned during my university days was understanding my style of studying, what worked for my body, how to listen when I'm fatigued and information's not processing, and being okay to take a nap when I need to. Yes. How can students optimize and get the, what is the, what is the best recipe to make the most out of productive productivity? So what we're talking about there is your concentration level yes. and your focus. So <laughs> that's like a, how long is a piece of string question. So okay. it really does depend on the person's um, independent ability to concentrate for long periods of time. 
it also ha will change according to subject. The more you dislike a subject or the more you find it difficult, the less you are able to concentrate. And so therefore, the study schedule needs to take that into account. So concentrate on placing your difficult subjects first. When the mind is fresh. When the mind is fresh, and then the easier subjects later on in the day or in your study uh, schedule. Um, I found that generally people can study between 20 to 45 minutes a day, take a break, another 20 to 45 minutes period, take another break, do that for about two hours and then take a much longer break. So it's almost like a school day. Mm, and they're yes. already into a routine of a school day, so try and keep it to a school day, but you can make the individual session shorter so the moment that concentration goes, up, 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 peaks, 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 and then it falls off. Stop working, take a break. Step away, go outside, get some fresh exactly. air, and then go back to your Five box. to 10 minutes, and then go back. Don't go on TV, don't go on social media. A break <laughs> does not mean it's time to pick up your phone and start no. scrolling. No, 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 no it's no, just no. a break from the books. Dr. Sharon, thank you for joining us today. And to you, if you are busy studying, whether you're on matric, grade eight, grade nine, whichever final you're doing, even in university, we wish you the best of luck. And I hope you take some, some of the advice that Dr. Sharon gave us and it will make you see this year through without the burnout. I love that conversation. Thank you so much, Doc. But we're going to keep it going right now and introduce you to another superpower that you need to capitalize on. And especially for you students right now, I need you to listen up. Because being successful is not only attributed to one thing. There are many pieces of a puzzle which contribute to your success. So today, we're going to dive into the world of sleep tactics to ensure you are well-rested to help you stay focused on getting those A-plus results in your tests and exams. So you're going to delve into these topics. We've got an incredible panel of experts. We've got a registered counselor, Sadia Southgate, as well as Psychedelic Association of South Africa Councillor Yasmin Gaby in the building. Ladies, good morning. How are we doing? Well, thank you. You're not suffering with any uh, lack of sleep at this time of the year yet? Yeah? Okay, you're the experts. All right, all right. I can, I can see the glow <laughs> oozing out. Before we even get into sleep, let's just talk about our physical and emotional well-being. How important is that just generally, especially dealing with something like exams, a lot of students entering the stressful period right now? Why is that so important? Mm, I think the important thing in navigating through that is to acknowledge that stress can be exhausting and overwhelming. Yes. And, you know, if you go on lack of sleep, you are going to not be productive in your exams. So essentially, that basically determines your level, your level of productivity. And your overall logic reasoning and your memory can be reduced during that time if you're going on a lack of sleep. So it's very important for you to have oh, sufficient wow. sleep. Mm. Okay, so it's more, more important than just having a good rest, right? Yes. This is potentially going to affect our exams when we're actually writing on the day. Mm -hmm. What's happening? Why is this the case? No, I think people just need to really get on board with sleep is more than just closing your eyes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just more than just going to sleep. There's so many factors, right? There's emotional, there's, there's your physical, there's so many aspects that you have to put into. So if you're not able to sleep, then all those factors need to come in and figure out what's the root. So if you're not sleeping, let's figure out what's the root of it. Yeah. Always figure out the root. What, what would you describe as like, I mean, obviously there's a difference between closing your eyes and sleeping and getting <laughs> optimal sleep is yeah, obviously something that we all word. are chasing. Mm. How do we sort of navigate towards that sort of uh, facet of things? Optimal sleep versus that restful, restful, uh, restless night where you're tossing and turning, you wake up, you still feel grumpy and cloudy. How do we maybe uh, differentiate between the two and how do we access more optimal sleep? Mm. So your sleep starts from the time you wake up. So let's talk about like, you know, like how you get hungry during the day. Yeah, your body yeah. also has a sleep drive where it worked itself. So from the time you wake up, your circadian biological clock, click, it starts with the sunrise. So you awake, your melatonin shuts down and then your drive starts, right? And it, it helps you to get to the end of the day. So as the sun clocks into the zenith, it's, 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 um, mid-sun, then it goes to afternoon sun, then it goes to sunset. Ah. So your body works biologically with that. So you need to work with that. That is the to get your optimal. And by the time you wake up, so your day should basically factor in how you're going to sleep at night. No one looks at it like that, Nobody right? looks at it like that. <laughs> so just like, like, just yes. put in the work and, and, I'll, then, and I'll sleep <laughs> will save me later. So, so if you have that, if you have the idea that I'm working towards my sleep, yeah. like towards a good meal, towards anything, it's a drive. Yeah. It's one of your biological needs. Yeah, can I just add to that and sure. say that, you know, a lot of the times kids and even us as adults, we just go to sleep, especially when it comes to exam yeah. time, we tend to 
pushing all those hours, but the important thing is your body still needs that level of consistency. So it's important that we, get, we keep that consistency and frequency going so we don't shock the body. Mm. And the important thing, especially for the exam time for students, is to kind of create a routine for them and create a set and like environment in terms of setting the tone with it is having a bath bomb, having the bubble bath going mm. for the muscles and the body to relax mm. because you, when your muscles are tense, your whole body is tense and then the lack of information can't like basically be, be absorbed. You're just telling me everything that I didn't do when I was in school. I didn't <laughs> exactly. relax. Exactly. Right? Why would I, you do I that? I stayed up <laughs> late, crammed everything <laughs> till the last minute. Exactly. I felt like a tense, stressed ball. <laughs> it was awful. But yeah. let's be practical about this. Maybe we can <laughs> serve some of the students right now, especially those that are trying to implement a better strategy as they lead up towards exams. So yes. you speak about consistency, you speak mm -hmm. about creating that sort of environment that allows you to relax, but more practically speaking, like when should we be getting to bed? Like how many mm -hmm. hours is enough? What's going to really give us that head start for the next day mm -hmm. and also allow us to capitalize during our exams yeah. when we wake up that next day? Mm -hmm. So I think we all know the six to eight hours, right? Yeah. But let's work with teenagers. Teenagers have their own biological clock. They've got two hours more than the average human. Yeah. So they are. So we have to allow for the night owl. We have to allow. So I think what happens to teens is the parents stress that they need to get to bed and that. But they can also self-regulate. So the idea is just to release the cortisol and the stress hormone in your body that allows you to have that rest. Uh -huh. Because remember that anxiety is peaking in your body. Yes. Your parents are stressing. Yes. Every The whole world is focused on the matriculants at this point. Imagine that level of stress. Yeah. So your cortisol is up. What's going to reduce your chemicals to make you relax? That is your just all you have to go is what's going to get me from this stressed out into feeling calm. Mm. And with calm, and, and put yourself in control with your exams, right? That's the whole point. Put yourself in some level of control. If you've got control, you won't be looping. And, you know, here's a tip. Just study something, whatever you want in your head, get it in before you sleep. Mm -hmm. So that will go into your subconscious mind. Sometimes you just need to read over something. But the main tip I have is get in control with your exams so that that doesn't loop before you go and sleep. I mean, we've got all the tools in the world. Meditate, go for a walk, exercise. We've got all the tips, but what's going to get you to be calm is the, is the main thing. I love that. Sorry, anything else you might want to add when it comes yes. to tips? Because everybody's listening right now, like, come <laughs> yeah, serve like, us. Let yes, us know yes, what we yes. can do. Yeah. I think if I could name just one or two is to know when your peak hour is. Mm. So, mm. for example, know when you're more productive. It may be not just even be an hour. It may be, you know, you enjoy your morning time. That's when you know your brain is more productive and you're able to absorb more information because what could happen is that students get so stressed because they know the exam is the next day. Yes. So they cramp everything now in yes. that night. So that stress level just mm -hmm. increase again. So if you, let's say, more productive in the morning or at night, know when your productivity level Take is. your strengths. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So in, essentially then your brain is able to then get the, in a, like basically enough sleep at night. But the thing that I would suggest for students is within, let's say, four to six hours before bedtime is to not have caffeine. Ooh, during okay. that That's time. And put all electronic devices away for at least one hour. Speaking before about two impossibles here for many yes, people. Yes, no caffeine, yes. no clothes? What do you mean? What is life? <laughs> but I also want to add to that and say that if something is working for me, I need to do more of it. And if it's not working, I fix it and I do what is helpful and efficient for me. So it doesn't necessarily mean that if no caffeine works for me, it may work for another student. So essentially, just stick to what works. Yeah, stick to what mm -hmm. works. And I know a lot of people try a, a certain medication or certain supplements, BioPlus or so, mm -hmm. assisting them with concentration yeah. or various options like that. But I mean, this is this is the goods. This is exactly what we needed. So yeah. this is a panel like the other. Thank you so much for your expertise, you. ladies. That was definitely refreshing. I know a lot of matriculants going through exams right now going to be listening to this and hopefully implementing it as well. And again, the value of a healthy state of mind and body, but more importantly, prioritizing sleep and creating that good environment. That's what we need. That's what we're chasing. And that's what we're going to get all the way up until those exams. And we're going to slay it. Bring on the A's. Bring on the A's. <laughs> Or maybe as a parent, uh, watching your kids go through all of this has stressed you out, or maybe just adulting at this time of the year has uh, taken its toll. We know that burnout is a big problem around this, this particular gateway of the year, so please, we're going to speak to the adults in just a moment about how you can deal with burnout and prevent it from happening. Then maybe you're stressed out because you're just that person who finds a happy place in making festive treats and your partner's not letting you get festive yet because it's only November. Don't worry. We're going to whip up some beautiful golden clouds Christmas-inspired cupcakes. Yes, the reindeers are coming out to play. Stick around. Oh, 
holiday digestive issues bothering you? Well, Adco Myogel has your back with a chance to win 5,000 Rand in cash each week. Answer weekly questions on Expresso's Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram pages, including that hashtag at GoMyoGel, and it could be yours. So don't let heartburn ruin the fun. Those T's and C's do apply. Good luck and stay comfy during the holidays. Welcome back, you're just in time. It's Expresso, your feel-good breakfast show on S3. Now, earlier we spoke about burnout, but if you're not sure, burnout is a term we hear more and more, and it is typically described as a feeling emotionally and physically drained. Now, we have clinical psychologist Kavashni Govender joining us this morning to give us her perspective on the condition, as well as tips for re-establishing your balance. We want to reset and we want to make sure we end the year not feeling pop like we did the last couple of years. Yeah. Kavashni, it's great to have you here again. Thank I'll you for joining you. us. Now, when we talk burnout, I think before we get to burnout, a lot of us are always exhausted as young adults, as adults in general. Is it normal for grown-ups to feel exhausted? So, so that's really important. So it's normal for us to feel tired. Okay. Um, so we have um, everyday stresses. Um, we'll have physical exertion. We might lose some sleep. We've been to, a, to an event. So very normal and regular to feel uh, tired. tired. Um, and, but this can be easily remedied. So if we get enough sleep, if we have, if we adjust our lifestyle in a certain way, um, easily remedied. You know, we have sleep, we catch up, we feel refreshed. We take some rest, we feel refreshed. Easily remedied. Okay. Yeah. Now, when do we cross over to burnout? Where is that line okay. or that phase? Because it's never a clear-cut line. Yeah, yeah. So moving into burnout is when we move from tired to being exhausted. So ex the exhaustion is key. So you would feel the mental and the physical exhaustion. Um, and this uh, burnout is not easily remedied. So if we have sleep, we get up in the morning, we still feel exhausted. Um, if we have rest, if we sit on a Sunday afternoon, like yesterday with a book and a cup of coffee, we don't feel um, rested. So yeah, it's not easily remedied, okay. like tired is. Okay, yeah. so when you're tired, you take a nap, you wake up, you feel better, but when you're burnt out and you, you know, have a full night's rest, yeah. you're <clears> still <throat> exhausted the next day. Yeah. Now, what are the physical side effects and as well as the mental side effects of someone experiencing burnout? Yeah, so f if we think of, again, um, Monday morning blues, um, 
people often talk about, let's look at the physical, people talk about an upset stomach, they talk about headaches, um, you may feel, um, um, you know, sick, mm. just a, a feel of unwell in your body. Um, and when you look at the physical, the, men, the mental symptoms, um, people can feel overwhelmed. Um, so burnout, is, it's really important that it's known as an occupational phenomenon. So it would be feelings around work. It would be a negative sense of, um, you know, being at work, a sense of mistrust at work. Also important is behavioral symptoms. Mm. So behavioral symptoms would be um, um, not completing tasks. Um, there would be deadlines and we wouldn't complete it. Um, there could be outbursts. So there's this colleague that's been annoying and then there's this huge explosion. So it's the mental, the physical and the behavioral that okay. we look at. Well, I remember, you know, experiencing burnout in my own career early on. And for me, that looked like you were reaching milestones, things you were supposed to celebrate and be excited about. Mm -hmm. But in mm -hmm. the moment, I was so exhausted. I was just wishing that moment over so that I could mm -hmm. go to bed because I know I had to wake up at half past three mm -hmm. the next morning again. Yeah. And looking back now, I'm like, wow, that was such an important career highlight that in that moment, I just wished it over so I could go to bed. Yeah. So how can we avoid, what are the, earlier I asked Dr. Sharon this as well about how, what do we need to look out for? Because only once you experience it do you know, hang on, I'm approaching mm. that end of mm. my candlestick. Mm. But how can we look out for our loved ones or even ourselves if we don't know what burnout looks like? So there's three main categories that we look out for. So um, th the first one is the exhaustion. So the me mental and physical exhaustion, the second one is feeling disconnected from work. You're saying, well, I couldn't enjoy the achievement. Um, it's the feeling of cynicism, um, mistrust you may feel at work, you know, um, nobody cares about me at work. Um, and the third one, the third category is productivity. Mm -hmm. We see that productivity is impacted. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so those are the three big things we look out for. If you're an employer, you look out for those things in your, in your employees and your team. Um, in your colleagues, in your friends, in your partner, those are the three big things you look out for. Really important to, that if it shows up in your personal life, then you're looking at something else. Okay. Because burnout is exclusively for work. Um, for work. Okay, okay. What do you do in the event it's now in your personal life? Is that a topic for a whole other day? <laughs> well, I think this is really important because um, then you get yourself to a mental health provider and we see, well, what is it? Um, because burnout is exclusively for work. What, what is it? Okay. Um, is it yeah, depression? Is it anxiety? Yeah. Okay. Well, Kavashni, thank you for joining us thank today. You. Thank yeah. you for sharing the ins and outs when it comes to burnout. I think for me, the most important thing from this conversation is burnout technically is around work and your work environment. It should not be filtering into your personal life. So if you are perhaps experiencing any of those symptoms and beyond, it's best to go and speak to a professional or perhaps a medical doctor to make sure that you end this year strong. All right, after that uh, very engaging chat, thank you so much, ladies. It's time now just to relax. Let's go back into our happy space, the kitchen. Why? Because it's time to grab your aprons and whisk away because the golden cloud, golden baker search is back. This could be life-changing if you are that foodie. So get ready to step into the world of festive bliss with golden cloud and beacon and ignite your passion and creativity for baking. So to get you inspired, we are going to try our hand at making Christmas reindeer cupcakes the recipe to create unforgettable memories with the kids. Trust me, they will love to do this. This is your 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 adulting dad boot camp, yes. Mr. De Mornay. Oh, um, bring it on. <laughs> I want to say we're going to try our hand at it, but Golden Cloud have made it so easy. So easy. So, so simple. Gee, you know how intimidated I am when it comes to baking. I'm a griller, I'm a fryer, I'm a fryer. <laughs> I'm a fryer, baby. A baker I am not, but this is bringing out the best in me. Yeah, because it's particular. You've got to follow the recipe. You've got to get the measurements right. And yeah. what I love about Golden Cloud, even if you take their simple vanilla flavored mix, which is great for cupcakes, for cakes, those sorts of things, it lends itself 
to a lot of creativity because it's so simple. So they've got everything that you need wrapped up in here. In fact, that Golden Cloud Vanilla Cake Mix, incredibly versatile. It takes only 30 minutes to bake. An added bonus, and with a simple addition of three ingredients, just eggs, oil, and water, you can have the perfect homemade vanilla sponge just like mom bakes. Okay, so I'm going to start with the, the actual batter. Nice, and You're going to yeah. start working through with our icing, and you'll find inside your box, you've got your little icing there. We've given you a... I've uh, already got mine in the bowl, yeah. There because we want extra icing for these <laughs> reindeers. Um, and then simply take out the batter, and they've got everything, the leavening agents, everything that you need is all pre-weighed and put in there. Now, if you don't have eggs, okay, this is a good tip, you can use one-third cup of chickpea brine oh, or wow. carbonated water as a substitute. I absolutely love it. This gets to the, nice. the creativity of the Golden Baker Search. So I'm going to start with the wet ingredients first. I've got our oil, we've got our milk, and you can crack on there with okay. the, the icing. So, we've so got let's our two eggs. You'll talk through your ingredients, I'll talk through mine, and then we can mix it up, right? All right. So, what so, else I've got, yours? Uh, so we've got the milk, we've got the oil, mm -hmm. um, and I said you can use water as well. And then we are going to add our two eggs. And obviously, if you want to go the vegan route, I've given you a great option. That, that chickpea oh, that brine cool is a hack, massive man. one. That man. was really cool. All right, so, so I'm going to mix that away. Yeah. Nice. Okay, I've got the icing sugar here on my side in the bowl. I'm going to add some uh, milk to this. We've got some vanilla essence, uh, a little bit of a pinch or two of salt. That's always just to balance it all out. Yep. Let me maybe add a little bit more of that to it. And then some butter. Yes, we're going to make this fluffy. We're going to make this wispy. Let me just grab a spoon for yes, this. Because you, you want it to have a bit of body because it's got to stand up. It's got to hold our little reindeer antlers yeah. and our sweets. But remember, when it comes to the Golden Baker Search, you eat with their eyes. And <laughs> you during do. the festive edition, it needs color, it needs theme, it needs creativity. 100%. So you're going to want the ingredients yeah. that stand up. Listen, I'm going to cheat here. You can use the Go worst it, power tools of mine, right? <laughs> <laughs> you're allowed, buddy. You've Sunday, earned the right. We're going to slow, slowly work our way into this. But already, I was contemplating whether there's going to be enough, like, sort of uh, wet ingredient to make this icing. But don't be fooled. It really does come together. You really just got to work it, spend some time on it, and you'll notice it slowly starts to just kind of work Ooh. itself together and all those in inconsistencies come out and you get a nice smooth fluffy mixture coming out of this one the icing we all <laughs> came for and it's almost like you're talking yourself through it to just yeah. buoy up your confidence there it's yeah. going to work it's out gonna this work. is going to be the best option. icing that's ever happened <laughs> um, i'm getting vanilla notes here on a different level nice. already so you can you can literally smell the to what degree they have pre-prepped this batter mm. for. It is delicious in, in its own right. But like you said, you don't need many ingredients. What you mentioned, like water, oil, and maybe some eggs, or not even eggs if you don't want that option, but it's all in the bag. Literally, everything is taken care of. You just use some basic essentials that everybody has in their pantry, and voila, you've got yourself an absolute artistic creation. I, I have a feeling that spoons will be dipping into this batter, and this is a great part to get the kids involved with invest them in the process okay so you mix through your batter absolutely beautiful i'm going to fast forward here we've dropped some batter into our little cake cups put them in the oven 30 minutes is all it requires nice. but keep an eye because you don't want to overcook them and then you end up quite small yeah um, we've got our beautiful can we home. can we talk about how perfect my icing was just uh, by the way hey. can we get a round of applause ladies and gentlemen yes, thank you so much the icing <laughs> award thank god this wasn't a competition for you and zoe to create because it wouldn't have ended up like that um okay so who's well let's both try let's try it out job, because okay. I, I have a feeling this is not going to be my strong point but so i'm going to give it a go okay. these are the cupcakes that have just come out that you mixed up this okay. is the icing i've just made and Whoa, piping skills on point here by g-man already i just as you say that um the because there's butter in this icing, make sure that your cupcakes have cooled. Bro, that was okay, professional you're gonna give this. stuff. Yeah, man. I, that's not bad. Yo, let me That's finish not this bad. Off for you, bro. That was okay, incredible. Okay, so you know what to do. Put our little accent pieces yeah. in. Yeah. The reindeer antlers are going in. We're going to have some jelly tots for our beautiful nose. And, of course, a little bit of black icing for the eyes. And this is just a jumping off point. If you want to create Santa or anything, you've got the vibe. This is what a combination of beacon and golden cloud is all about. And here's what it can give you access to. You stand the chance to bake your way to 50,000 Rand in cash. That is life-changing. And, of course, that's in the Golden Baker Search 2023 brought to you by Golden Cloud and Beacon. So to enter, you've got to reply to the competition post on the Expresso social media pages with a picture and a description. And I'm understanding it. They must be amazing, that picture and description of your most decadent festive bake. And make sure that you include the Golden Cloud and Beacon products that you use in your picture along with that hashtag Golden Baker Search 2023. You can also enter via WhatsApp 
really simply 0793789769 is the number to use. And as a viewer even, if you are interested in baking and wanting to level up, even if you don't want to enter the competition, they're going to be weekly hampers to be won with some amazing prizes. I'm talking DeLonghi and better, incredible. So entries closed December the 20th, but you can find all the T's and C's at expressoshow.com. How cool is that, bro? Oh, that looks hey. beautiful, man. <laughs> Absolutely this, beautiful. This is better than grilling, I'm going to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I'm changing my mind. I'm loving this. Hey, man, I've just gotten my kids onto it, but this is the kind of creativity we are looking Looking for in the golden cloud, golden baker search 2023. Mr. Eyes well done, and buddy. Voila. Oh. Dungeons. Special. <laughs> Special. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. It is your Feel Good Breakfast Show. It's Expresso on S3. And self-care is the unofficial way of saying me time. Now, a lot of people love to also do a self-care Sunday. But today is Monday, and we want to make sure that your bathroom acts as your own century, sanctuary rather, in your own home. Now, we are about to dive deep into creating the perfect ambiance for relaxation with expert principal designer Katie Martin and counsellor Danelle Mayer joining us in studio today. Ladies, welcome. Great to have you here. Thank you. Katie, I'm going to start off with you. What is your ideal me time? My ideal me time is to close the bathroom door, shut out the dogs, shut out the fiancé <laughs> and the outside world. <laughs> And I run a hot bubble bath, I have my podcast going, and I just like to really relax. Mm. That <laughs> sounds incredible, and it's so important to have me time. Exactly. Danelle, why is it so important for you to establish some me time in your busy life? Well, essentially what you're saying is, you know what, I'm going to prioritise myself, right? And so it's so important that we carve out time at the end of the day to just say, I'm going to take some time to de-stress, decompress, and sort of give myself that opportunity to emotionally regulate and just process the day and put your emotional and mental well-being first. And just have time to yourself. I might not have dogs, but I have cats and they just want to be <laughs> everywhere you go. And sometimes you're like, can I just have the bathroom all to myself, please? And I know there are parents with little ones that's exactly the same. Now, Katie, how can we describe how we can create a sanctuary within our bathroom? 
So one thing I always say to clients is treat your bathroom as if it were a hotel or a guest house bathroom, and those bathrooms are often very pared back. All the essentials are packed away, so pack away your face wash, pack mm -hmm. away your serums, clear the counter of clutter, clear every surface of clutter, and try and also use vessels that are aesthetically pleasing and decant your hand wash into a beautiful mm -hmm. bottle. So just try and create that sense of calm, but also a space that is aesthetically pleasing, so you want to be in the space and you can relax. And you're more productive when you go, you get rid of the clutter when you are in a hotel bathroom, when yeah. you're visiting family or friends and you use the bathroom, you basically just need what's in your toiletry bag. I don't know why we yeah. have five day yeah. creams when we tend yeah. to just gravitate towards the one. Exactly. Yeah. Now, Danella, how important is it for us to just make sure that, you know, we, we find that tranquility in our everyday life for us to, to prioritize ourselves? I think it's absolutely important, right? And I think, you know, alluding to what Kate said, it's about creating that tranquil environment so that we do have that space to just kind of switch off and say, you know what? I'm gonna put myself first in this moment. Mm. Um, and create that space for yourself. You know, I think a lot of people assume that taking care of yourself and you know, not being stressed and busy is you being unproductive, but taking care of yourself is being productive and it's so important for our overall well-being. How long would you say is, is a good time? Because I know there's a lot of people like, oh, they feel guilty when they take that time yes. for themselves. Yes, I would say carve out a routine or time that works for you. Whether it's half an hour, 45 minutes, put the phone away, get into a habit of digital detox in the yes. evening, and get into those healthy habits of a good sleep routine and good self-care routine. And also, I love that, the digital detox, it's mm. so important. Now, Katie, let's get practical. You mentioned items like decant your soap into an aesthetically pleasing container. So here we have a beautiful glass jar. It's got the cute little sticker on that says hand soap. What else can we do? Let's get practical on how we can zhuzh up our space to create that tranquil feeling. So obviously a bathroom is generally quite a small space. You mm. only have so many square meters that you work with. <laughs> yeah. So you can see I have been very practical. Something that I like to do is an Epsom salt bath, mm. but decant it into a bottle. Don't leave it in the cardboard box that you've yes. bought it in. So you can leave it out. Um, and also by leaving it out, you remember to use it. Yes. Which is also something else that I think bathrooms are, you know, you've got, like you said, all those face creams that you never use. And another item that I often um, suggest is a either a diffuser or something that yes. smells nice with, you know, some essential oil that helps you mm -hmm. to relax. I've got lemongrass, it's a personal favorite, but you can use other things like lavender, chamomile. Mm -hmm. And in terms of creating that sense of calm in a bathroom, candlelight is essential. Okay. So turn off, the, turn off the lights and use natural candlelight or daylight, if there's daylight. <laughs> <laughs> and just enjoy that. Now, you also brought a little plant along, so how important is it putting some greenery, some freshness in your bathroom? It is so important. I think people underestimate the power of plants mm. and also forget how easy it is yes. to put a plant in your bathroom. Delicious Monsters, one of the easiest plants to look after. You water them once a week and they often thrive with the moisture content in your bathroom. So if you do have space, don't be scared to bring a plant into your bathroom so your bathroom doesn't feel a, like a sterile, tiled mm -hmm. box. Yeah. And that's what we're trying to, you know, create is that just, you need to soften it, basically. You need to soften it indeed. Well, yeah. ladies, thank you for joining us today thank and just so showing much. how important it is to carve out some time for yourself. And that means relaxing at its finest. And Twin Saver is giving you the perfect way to carve out your me time with a chance to win one of 10 bathroom makeovers worth 30,000 Rand each. Now that is something you do not want to miss out on. You can visit twinsaver.co.za for more information. And all I'm gonna say is, Good luck. If you want it, just click for it, baby. It's as easy as that. Order it and have it now. That's convenience. But in this modern world, just how much is convenience mm. costing us? 
Well, in today's Our Money Matters chat, we look at what convenience means to us and why we are or why we are not willing to pay that price. And I've got our expert panel here. Hey. It's not a competition. <laughs> you are. You're a, you, I rely very heavily on the financial advice that I get from you guys. You don't understand. Uh, now, I love the fact that we all approach this from very different seasons of life, different mm. personality types, different motivations. So I'm going to set the scene for you guys. And I want to ask you a question first, because we're talking about convenience versus spend, okay? And sometimes you are willing to spend a bit more because it matters to you. Yeah. So I'm going to start with the conveniences that you are willing to pay for. Sorry? Um, I know I can clean my own house, but I will pay for the convenience of having that service to help me be more productive. Because it's house cleaning is not something I enjoy. So that for me is the convenience of just having it taken care of. Yeah, and it takes time, valuable time. That's a commodity yeah. for That's, us. What's your convenience? You're 100% really? on it, man. I, I saved up for a dishwasher for that same reason. <laughs> <laughs> I can dishwasher the saved my relationship, <laughs> dude. I will tell you that straight up. And, and these are the things I think are very much what Zoe's saying. You, you start to realize, I think maybe as you get older, I don't know, but you realize that time is far more valuable yeah. than the mundane things that you constantly find yourself doing. And you realize that I want to get out of these like sort of uh, patterns that are just wasting time. They're not giving me back what I need. Makes but, uh, you unhappy. You're only doing mm. emotional cleaning, and you don't have to, man. There's other ways <laughs> of processing that sort of stuff. Like this. Mm. Uh, mm. That being said, sometimes it works in the other way, and we'll find ourselves doing things because it's our pattern or our personality type when we should relinquish that to someone else. It would just mm. make more sense. Mm. Is there something that you just refuse to pay for because you can do it better yourself, Zoe? I think that when it comes to renovating and... and, and I could literally <laughs> just see your eyes light up when you said that. I mean, I can get a handyman to hang the photos straight, but I want to do it myself. Firstly, yeah. I find a lot of joy out of doing projects like that myself. But also, I, I save. I don't need someone to come and do that. Mm. I know they can do it perfectly, but I, I'm happy to have it imperfectly. Um, I'll, I'll set this one up for you because I've, I've realised I've stepped away from supplements and anything like that oh, because yeah. I wanted to force my body to do what it needs to do first. And now I can work back into that space. But I didn't realise how much I was relying on other things to create my own health when it was a sidestep. So how do you do that, dude? What's I, your one thing that you can't not do? I think <laughs> it's, it's, it's definitely... <laughs> You know what, I, I, I've been fighting with this thing about gardening because I, it takes a lot of time. If you see my house and the inside of it, I have 67 or 68 plants inside wow. alone. <laughs> and that means you've got to water that constantly. And they're all very different Bro, as well. Exactly, in life cycles, but ferns yeah. versus... Ooh. But the thing is, like, I love that, but it's also taking up a lot of time. So I've had to fight with this and realise... I'll do it when I can, but I need someone else to assist me with this because I'm not on top of it. So there's these moments where you kind of fight with, uh, is it worth oh, it or sure. not? And that's one of them for me, man. Money's not a question. Okay, what is that thing that you just wish you didn't have to pay for? If you could, if you could afford any convenience in the world, what would it be, Zoe? Oh. The, the car, main, the maintenance that comes with the car. Like, I wish my car just was perfect all time round. There was always petrol in it. You never had to worry about it the tires. It was automated, the, yeah. It, it was just, I can jump in and go about it. Okay. I wish I didn't have to think about oil, tires, waters, cleaning, sure. all of that. If, if, if <laughs> money... Partner up, Zoe, partner up. <laughs> yeah, I like that, actually. If, if money was an issue and it was a convenience, I think I would honestly get someone to make my food for me. <gasps> Uh -huh. Honestly, think about it. I was it. thinking like about that. Meal yeah, plans, yeah. the amount of time you put into going to the shop. What am I going to make? Ingredients. The healthy stuff. I need stuff. someone yeah. to... That is actually my new goal. You're going to see me having a new private chef make my own food. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, that'll be a win. I'm thinking we're going to get to digital versions of ourselves. Someone can go to work digitally for me. Okay, I'll pay well, for that. Careful, that might happen <laughs> soon. Is this you? Can I yeah. <laughs> AI might change all of this in just a moment. Uh, but yeah. convenience is definitely, as we can see with this little group, a matter of personal perspective and choice. And if you have the finances to buy yourself some time or some comfort, then do it. It's what matters to you. But always ensure that you are making a calculated financial and not emotional decision that is within your means. And if you're a frequent local traveller, like the person running out the door with their suitcases right now, then the Nedbank My Goals Premium account will give you, get this, 12 free domestic lounge Whoa. visits per year, so, <laughs> which is beyond convenient and really does matter to some people. And there's a whole lot more value add. So if you want to go and check out some other incredibly convenient benefits of this particular account, which is gold, go and visit nedbank.co.za. Mabel, check this. With a MyGold's premium account, you get 12 free airport lounge visits. 12? Yeah. Good David. When are you busy planning your next getaway during office hours? Ah, uh, man.
It's my feel good breakfast show. Welcome back, you beauties. If you're suffering from the Monday blues, here's a way that you could push back. Your Monday could start on the most winning note. How does this sound? Today's Daily Lotto is an estimated 430,000 rand. A half a million could be on its way to you, and this is how you get there. So there are multiple ways to buy your lotto ticket this morning. You can start by purchasing in-store. Um, you can go to nationallottery.co.za. That's their website. You can go Go to their brilliant mobile app or your cell phone banking there is the the tag there or you can simply dial star 120 star 7529 hash for the ussd um, and i would recommend that you go and check out all of their social pages as well just for a couple of reminders um, and do that daily to find out what's at stake 430 thousand rand could be yours you just gotta take that leap of faith Oh, thank you so much, G-Man. It's almost perfect timing. One minute past eight o'clock, and it's time for national headlines. First up now, the University of Mpumalanga in Mbombela is celebrating its 10th anniversary. It was established in 2013 and started with an enrollment of 200 students. Now, this academic year, the university has some 8,000 students enrolled, and the institution has established 32 partnerships with international universities in Europe, North America, and Asia, as well as some in Africa. Now, the Deputy Vice Chancellor and Principal Prof. Toko Mayakiso says many strides have been made to bring the university to where it is today. While carrying on with national headlines, a 27-year-old suspect is expected to appear in the Pretoria Magistrates Court today after he was arrested with copper valued at some 50 million rand. Now, the arrest followed a tip-off received by the Hawks about a syndicate allegedly involved in various criminal activities, including dealing and selling copper in the city. Now, they swooped on a property in Pretoria's Boyson Street where they found the owner who indicated that he'd bought copper at an auction in Bloemfontein. Now, copper valued at some 50 million rand was confiscated. Well, from our national news headlines, let's head over to international news. Now, President William Ruto's government in Kenya has imposed a range of new taxes to replenish the depleted public purse. But the measures have triggered anger among Kenyans. Now, Tourism Minister Alfred Mutua warned that people would be deterred from coming to Kenya, which attracts visitors from across the world to its wildlife parks and Indian Ocean beaches. Now, Mutua said with a quote, We harass our visitors when they come to this country, and we wonder why they don't come back. When you go to South Africa, Rwanda, or Dubai, they don't harass you. Unquote. Well, carrying on with the international headlines, Israel yesterday rejected growing calls for a ceasefire in Gaza. Now, military specialists say Israeli forces are intensifying their operations against Palestinian Islamist group Hamas. Now, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has demanded that all, of all about 240 hostages captured by Hamas during its October 7 attacks on Israel be returned. Now, Israel's military has used a combination of ground troops together with air and navy power to pound Gaza and consolidate its incursions into the narrow coastal strip aiming to destroy Hamas. Now, some 9,700 people have been killed in Gaza since the 7th of October. Well, lastly in our headlines, Langa, the oldest township in the Western Cape, celebrated its centenary in style this weekend. Now, to commemorate the historic event, the city of Cape Town organized the Langa Centenary Music Festival, the three-day music festival which showcased a diverse array of music performances, events, and activities to honor the community's remarkable culture, heritage, and community spirit. Now, Langa is steeped in history, including being a catalyst in the fight against apartheid and is only a mere 10 kilometers from Cape Town's CBD. Now, Cape Town's Mayor Jordan Hill Lewis said while townships were born out of a pain and as a tool of exclusion, Alanga had evolved and developed into a strong, rich, and vibrant community. And we are here to celebrate it. Right now, though, we'll celebrate the rest of the headlines. And here's G-Man with the latest when it comes to all things sport.
Oh, Ryle, I'm so sorry that I keep killing the beautiful energy of this show, but let's start with the good, the bad, and the ugly from the ICC Men's Cricket World Cup. The Proteas are oh, not their day yesterday, albeit they have assured themselves a semi-final spot, but they missed a golden opportunity to surpass India at the top of the table. In fact, on the opposite end of that spectrum, suffering a heavy 243-run defeat at Eden Gons in Kolkata. India amassing 326 for just five, powered by Virat Kohli's unbeaten and very well-measured 101. So that's the Entry marked a joint international cricketing milestone alongside the great Sachin Tendulkar, sealing India's top table finish. So with one more group match against Afghanistan, who have been on good form, the Proteas, they'll aim to obviously rebound before the knockouts commence and find that rhythm again. Don't forget you can catch all of the Cricketing World Cup action live on SABC3, SABC radio stations, or you can simply down the, download the brilliant SABC Plus app with no subscription needed. It really is brilliant. Now let's turn to rugby, and he's back. Not that he ever left. Rossi Erasmus is now set to reclaim the helm as the head coach of the Springboks. So Erasmus, who previously led the team to that World Cup glory in 2019, takes over again from Jacques Ninema, who announced his departure for a new role with the Irish superstars Leinster. And Erasmus, after winning the World Cup as coach in 2019, transitioned into the role of South Africa's director of rugby, but his influence obviously remained palpable on the field, culminating in the Springboks securing their record-breaking fourth World Cup title. I'm sure he is now eyeing a historic third consecutive World Cup triumph in 2027. I have a feeling he's going to stick around. Then on to motorsport, and Max Verstappen has done it again and under pressure. He showcased his prowess with a commanding victory at the Sao Paulo Grand Prix, marking his record-breaking 17th win in the 2023 season. But there was drama. It unfolded even before the race began, as Charles Leclerc had to retire due to a hydraulics failure during the formation lap. Then there was another restart. Verstappen maintained his lead after after a restart following a collision between Alex Albon and uh, Kevin Magnussen. And he fended off a challenge from one of his major foes this season, Lando Norris, to uh, secure his first place. Then, and, of course, his second win of the weekend. Norris back on the podium, claiming second. And then Fernando Alonso, you can see what it meant to him, making it onto the podium again as well. And now we round off with heartbreaking news. Amazulu FC sadly confirmed the passing of 32-year-old striker Bongi Nkosi Ntuli. Durban Blaze Club expressed their sorrow, revealing that Ntuli had been diagnosed with an aggressive form of cancer that tragically led to his untimely death at Midlands Medical Centre Private Hospital in Peter Maritzburg. Ntuli, who began his professional career with Golden Arrows in 2012 and then later spent some time with Mamaloli Sundowns, he had been with Amazulu since 2019 and a big part of their plans and the club have requested privacy for Ntuli's family and friends during what must be a very difficult time so we will leave it just at sending our most heartfelt love and condolences especially to his family and those members of the footballing fraternity that knew him and that's where we leave our sport let's get into the traffic thank you graham well let's look at those roads in santon johannesburg there's congestion on the N1 southbound at Winnie Mandela Drive. All lanes are open, but traffic is slow moving. And in Cape Town, there's a lost load on the N1 outbound. It's on that ramp to Platterkloof. The left lane is closed and due to the obstruction, allow for more travel time as delays are expected. If you're in Somerset West in Cape Town, there's congestion on the N2 outbound. It's at Victoria Road. Expect delays. That's your traffic. Let's take another look at your weather. And the SA Weather Service has issued a yellow level 2 warning for severe thunderstorms resulting in strong winds, heavy downpours and large hail expected over the extreme eastern parts of the Northern Cape and the eastern parts of the Eastern Cape as well as the central and western parts of both Northwest and Free State. Extremely high fire danger conditions are also expected over northern parts of the Northern Cape and, and the Moses Cortana local municipality of Northwest. On that note, let's take a look at your temperatures for today.
Those are your temperatures for your Monday. Well, let's take a look at our sunrise view for this hour. This one was sent in by Margaret from Durban. Margaret said, love the cloud formation on this one. Have a great week, team. Well, Margaret, thank you for that beautiful sunrise view. And if you would love to share yours with us, do so on our WhatsApp line. That number is 63 408 so, this summer, Woolworths wants you to show them. Come on, they want to see your energy, they want to see your spark, they want to see your inner confidence. And then you could be a part of their next re-denim campaign. I love this. They're looking for real people. That's where this starts. So, this is your chance to show South Africa what makes you, you. Yeah, come on, step up, come alive, show us what you got. And if you're dying to be a part of the Woolworths re-denim campaign, but you're not sure where to start with your entry video, well, okay. don't worry. We've got some tips for you on how you can catch their attention. Oh, yeah. Um, I love this. And, and for any content creators, this might be a great kind of a rule book to follow as well. So let's start with one. Woolworths is looking for real mm. people. So don't be shy. Just get over yourself for five minutes and show us who you really are. And maybe start with a smile. Your unique personality is what this is going to be 100%. resting on. And it starts with a smile. So let your flag fly, yeah, baby. Now, number two, take this down. And don't forget, if you've got a unique talent or skill, mm. maybe you can do a shimmy shake like no one else, then why not include that in your video too? Bring us all that unique little things that makes you no, you. Now we're going to get like a million shimmy and shakes, but that's okay. <laughs> uh, then tip number three, make sure that your video is clear mm. so that they can actually see and hear everything that makes you unique and confident. Maybe get someone to help you do it so yeah. that you can tick those professional boxes. You know, sell it. Don't hide in the corner of a dark uh, passage somewhere. <laughs> we want to see all your beauty. Yes, and don't that's your forget, talent. Yeah. Yeah, that's your talent. That could be your glow. But don't forget the applications are open right now. What are you waiting for? Just upload a video of yourself that best demonstrates your confidence and use the hashtag ReXShowThem attitude to TikTok using the hashtag ReXShowThem and, of course, tagging Woolworths underscore SA. Simple as that. Mm -hmm. And then if you want to qualify for that entry, make sure that the post, and please take this on, make sure that that post and upload is public. Or you can submit your entry via our dedicated WhatsApp line, and that's to this number, 071-295-1485. We'll keep it up on our socials, and you can follow the prompts to submit your yeah, entry. Don't forget the entries will close at 5 p.m. on Friday the 10th of November. That's Ooh. the end of this week, so your T's and C's Talk. can be found on expresso.com. This is your week. This is your moment. Step up, stand alive, and show us what you got. Come answer. on. <laughs> well, we are taking the quickest of breaks. When we get back, we're going to take a look at how you can enhance your load shedding experience and why you should be entering the Color Your Plate with Koo Season 3. That is still on its way.
season three of Color Your Plate with Koo is here. It's back. It's terribly exciting. Now, this hit cooking competition reality show on SABC2 gives foodies from around the country the platform to show off their skills in an attempt to win their share of 500,000 rand in prizes. Now, this morning, we are joined again by last season's winner, Karen van der Madver. Karen, lovely to have you. Welcome back. Thank you so much. And again, congratulations. What an incredible journey this is, must have been for you. It, it was amazing. And I mean, it's almost... A year ago. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and, and still, here we are talking about it because I think it made such a big impact in your life as well. Firstly, take me back. What was the motivation behind your entry? Why did you decide you're going to take that leap of faith? I think all of us search for, search for something to excite you and search for challenges. And that was my challenge of, um, of last year. <laughs> <laughs> It's good. It's good, I think, to step out of your comfort zone and, and challenge yourself a little bit, especially, you know, with, with regards to this show and cooking. But I know that there is potentially a lot of people out there looking at, at, at what we are talking about right now who feel they might have the skills, but they lack the confidence to do so. So this is a good, I think, way for you to come across and say, listen, what was it like for you, the behind the scenes? Because we don't know what happens behind the cameras as well. What was the experience like for you? I mean, obviously, obviously stepping out of your comfort zone, stepping into a competition environment um, with cameras on you all the time, it is nerve wracking. But being there in front of the cameras and pushing yourself to just deal with everything in the situation, it sort of helps you get over your fears and it forces you to adapt. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, you know, from experience as well, just being on set, I mean, the vibe is always incredible. I mean, you form the most incredible relationships most and you definitely. learn a lot as well. You most definitely learn a lot. And, and everyone that's in that situation with you, it becomes like, uh, like a little family. Yeah. You know, you lean upon each other and you learn from each other. And exactly. it's, it's just... a one hell of a time. Oh, and it's something to write home about because, you know, this is maybe a once in a lifetime opportunity to get involved in something like this and also showcasing what you are good at, which I also love. The thing is with, with cooking shows like this, if we watch it, I mean, we know, you know, sometimes uh, contestants are giving, given this weird ingredients to, to cook with and it's, it's, it's a trying to catch you out type of scenario. But this particular show focuses on what you have at home. Um, and, and, and I love that. How did you experience that? I mean, just cooking with the things at home in your cupboard and making something absolutely beautiful. Exactly. I mean, Koo is a, it's a household staple in South Africa. Everyone's got Koo products in their, in their pantry at home. So, you know, it's, it's easier. It's things you use every day. And with the competition, it's nice because you take these everyday items and you turn it into something magical. Yeah, your space to be creative. Can you exactly. remember what was one of your favorite challenges? I think one of my most favorite challenges was the one where we had to put up taster plate. Oh, wow. And I had duck and I had a, a, a Thai carrot puree and it was just... Yeah. And loved that, it that challenge. Together. It really did. It came together. It really worked out. Now listen, uh, for, for our viewers out there who's watching, who feels that, listen, I can do this, um, I've got the skills, I would want to be part of this, what's your message? I would just say, go for it. Go for it, guys. Um, push your boundaries and give it a go and you will find your confidence and you'll find your way throughout the competition. Just enter and do your best. Yeah, I love that because I think if anything that this year has taught us is to, to not be scared, to step out of that comfort zone. No, definitely. Uh, and take on something big. It's and that's what it's all about. Take a leap of faith and put yourself out there. Enter to be a contestant on Color Your Plate with Koo. All you have to do is take a video of yourself cooking a colorful meal using any Koo product as an ingredient and explain why you should be part of season three. Now remember, it's all about selling your personality as much as your cooking skills. So you take that video, WhatsApp it to uh, 072-741-5357 and stay tuned because Corin has got something delicious up her sleeve in the kitchen in just a moment. Okay, well, listen, we are about to have a little <laughs> bit of fun. Thank you for that, Stradom. Well, let's turn our attention to when load shedding strikes. Mm. Oh. Now, when you choose technology that helps keep the lights on, 
or tech that keeps the internet on, uh -huh. or technology that cooks your food lightning fast before that 6 p.m. cutoff? Well, those are the types of questions we want to ask because with Photocom, you might get to have all three when you enhance your plan to access smart lighting a mini UPS and the mighty air fryer. Ooh. Now, gents, I have a question uh -huh. for you. It's a bit of a conundrum. Okay. Lights or the internet? Which one is more important during load shedding for you? Lights Hang or I the internet? I think I transcended lights. I think I could see in the dark. <laughs> I was born in the dark. I was born in the dark. Because I was born, yeah. Um, I, it's weird, but even as you mention these things, I think we got to a point where we had to kind of transcend. I like the natural lighting. I like having candles on. I like what it does to mm. my family in these moments. So we've restructured our logistics around dealing with it. So a lot less has become kind of this fundamental, oh, I don't have the resources that I need. Yeah. But that being said, probably the internet, mm. because the one mainstay for us with kids is you need to tap into. So whether it's to download the right stuff or to watch the right stuff, we've got to have content for the kids to stream. <laughs> yeah, DG, I agree with you 100%. I think uh, just being able to stay connected almost kind of makes you feel like like it's not that bad. Mm. You know, I'm still in touch. I can still do certain things <laughs> and many things. You've got your cell phone, your tablet, your laptops, if they are charged. So I definitely would say yeah. the internet for me over power. I think we've gotten used to being in the dark. Yeah, man. <laughs> Too used to it, actually. Now we have like load shedding concerts and stuff now. I love it, man. My kids absolutely embrace it, yeah. There we go. Okay, so both of you choosing the internet yes, over life yeah, if you had yes. to choose one of them. Look at us new school peeps. Nice. Now, when it comes to the load shedding schedule, I think the worst time for load Ooh. shedding to hit most homes is between that 6 p.m. and 8 p.m. Oh. time slot. Oh. Now, the Good. next question for you is, do you try and cook before or after if you're having load shedding between 6 and 8, or do you just order in? All of the above? <laughs> yeah. I don't have the time to... I'm often, like, prepping for, like, gym later on in the day. I only come back at, like, 7.30. It is the worst because I've often defrosted something or prepped for the evening, come home, what am I going to do now? I won't lie to you, I often go for the takeout option because <laughs> yeah. I'm just like, I'm so tired at the end it's of the okay, day. I'm like, okay. I don't have the energy. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to be able to stay awake till after 8 o'clock when the power comes back <laughs> to actually eat the food. So, unfortunately, I'm losing that battle and often using a takeout. I went from bry to oven to residual heat in the oven yesterday. That's how well we <laughs> Residual planned. heat? Yeah, Whoa. No. And, and we literally were able to, because with kids, I suppose, we eat in two different streams. So for the kids, it becomes a lot more important. But we had a breakthrough with them around the fire yesterday, again, going traditional, nice. which was great. And nice. It took me about nine hours to build to that point to involve them <laughs> in every part of the process. But again, it kind of, it was more of the logistics for me to work around that and just to take away the risk factor so that you're not always reliant on a schedule looking to see, OK, well, the lights are out. When is it going to go out? Did it rather just make your baseline that you're prepared for that. So it's a, it's a difficult one. For me, it's worse in the mornings when we've got to get up and go to work. Oh, then the a, then is, load shedding. This will morning was that. exactly that. And it's Ooh. tough. OK, well, my next question, between an air fryer, a smart lightning, lighting, I keep saying lightning, That's lighting. Can you buy that? <laughs> well, let's read both. Air fryer, smart lighting, or UPS, which one Gosh. would make the biggest difference for you? Um, I'll say very quickly, uh, mini UPS probably. Yeah, I think more the air fryer is not going to work when there's no power, right? But so you can cook quickly before the power goes can. off. Yo, how can you be without food? This is tough. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go with the air fryer, I think. I'm going to go with the air, air fryer. fryer. I need to eat, man. <laughs> I need to eat. I will send you updates every <laughs> once in a while of what's going on on the social media platform. I'll give you oh, some okay. leftover yeah. food. Thank you, boy. <laughs> well, there we go. With Vodacom, you can enhance your plan to enhance your load shedding experience and to light up your day, Vodacom, they are giving you the chance to win 3,000 Rand by Ooh. telling us which item you would choose to make your load shedding experience better. Would it be a UPS, smart lighting, or an air fryer to get dinner done in a flash? You can share your answer on Expresso's Facebook, X, or Instagram pages using that hashtag enhance with Vodacom. There are T's and C's that can be found on our website, that's expressoshow.com. Sansi, enhance what you love, add more of what you need to your contract. Choose from a range of enhanced options in store or online. Further together, Vodacom.
So we're going to take a quick break, then we're going to um, tantalise you with the cutest things you have ever seen in your life. Yes, the Tears Sleepathon oh. is coming. If you want to prove how amazing you are as a human being, spend some time with some furry friends. And Tears allow us to really help what they're trying to do just by spending a night with these amazing pups. Oh, I absolutely love You've that. I've been for the last two years. It is so powerful. Something else that's going to be powerful is listen to this recipe. Okay. It is deliciously powerful. Okay. Talk about cheesy chaka like a bread Ooh. with what? a biltong butter, baby. Get oh. out. Oh, oh. Get out of here. It's happening right here on your Feel Good Breakfast Show. Don't go anywhere. You could do it in the air fryer. Oh, you could actually. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. It is your feel good breakfast show. Uh, Michelle. <laughs> Sorry, you know what? The airtime's running out, but you have. We wanted to know from you this morning on our Good Morning Post. Have you ever perhaps experienced burnout? Maybe I'm going through that right now. Mm. But what are the signs and how can you address it before it's too late? We asked you to share on Facebook as well as WhatsApp. So let's take a look what came through. Yeah, we've got Lady Owl coming through with this one. She says, good morning, fam, on this beautiful Monday. Yes, it's that feeling of not sleeping properly, exhausting, and a lack of focus. I haven't really talked to anyone about it. Maybe counselling or a doctor might help. 100%. Yes. I think de definitely discussing it with your community, with your your people or trained professionals is going to assist you for sure and get you over that little hump for sure. It is a real hump and it's something that needs to be taken mm. seriously. Well, let's take a listen to what you had to say on voice notes. Good morning. Good morning, Feel Good Express. team, Mrs. Nirmala Devi, Mudli of Kauteng. Yes, I do. I do realize burnout can be very, very uncomfortable because knowing you having a full busy schedule, especially when there were my days of dressmaking and a house full of kids. Mm. And you know, it was just uh, how you go about it. How would you go about it? Yes, take a day off if you have to. Take a pill if you need to, to correct the imbalances you experience. And of course, pamper yourself. I think that's the best simple solution you can have at hand at home. Have a blessed week. Thank you. Oh, it's coming with some wisdom. Definitely. And I think it's so important to look at all those features. I mean, if you take about take into account the fact that we are running on a low tank right now, so why not refuel not just your body but your mind too? Take some time off to fill up your cup and find that positive stimulation that we possibly have been ignoring and lacking over the last few years. We've got lots of time to still fill it up, and I think uh, we are doing that right now, assisting you on your feel-good breakfast show. Maybe you want to stick around for this one because lots of good conversation can, can help you with that, I think. 
think. And surrounding yourself with good people, Zoe. That's right. Yeah. You definitely need that. Well, listen, let's head on over to the kitchen. All right, we are back with Karen van der Madeve, winner of season two of Color Your Plate with Ku, and she's going to be showing us why she made it all the way to the top. Karen, lekker weer eens hier in die kombuis by Expresso. And listen, I would go as far as saying this should be on every bride table, ever. <laughs> well, this is proudly South African. Ah, oh, because, because there's chakalaka. Exactly. There's biltong. So we're doing a cheesy chakalaka bread. Yes, we are, with a, with a biltong butter. Okay, well, I think for a lot of people, the minute you say, like, let's make bread, they automatically go like, I don't know, because people are scared of bread. Why? And it doesn't take time, you know, this is an easy, a easy throw-together bread, you'll see now. Um, it doesn't take time, it doesn't need any proving, it just, it's throw-together, put it in the oven and... All right, it, it doesn't up. need any proving, that means you don't need to let it sit and rise. No. Not really? Exactly. Okay, well, show us. Take us through quickly. So let's go. This is easy. So we are going to first start off with all of our wet ingredients. Wet ingredients. Okay. So I'm going to start with our ku chakalaka, firstly. And you know, that is golden. Beautiful. Nothing better than some chakalaka. I love that. Then um, I'm just going to use this, steal that from you. I'm go for sorry. it. Go for it. Just beat the eggs just slightly. Two eggs. All right. Chakalaka. Beautiful. Some melted butter. Mm, mm, mm. And there comes the decadence. Beautiful. Just give it a bit of a mix through. All right. It smells. Can you smell the chakalaka? Okay. It smells amazing. You know, uh, that, that is the South African smell. I know, right? That chakalaka is just a South African smell. It's beautiful. Okay. There we go. That's quite easy. Add our. Milk. A little dash of milk. Okay. Yeah, is there anything that I can help you with? You can, indeed. Yes. You can start our butter for us. Oh, you fantastic. Can mash our There's butter, garlic, garlic oven and roasted garlic, oh. and mix in the biltong powder. I love um, that. And you know how nice is just biltong and butter on a slice of bread alone. Exactly just that's lovely. Right. Okay, so I'm going to mix this in there quickly while you do that. So, so that's all of the wet ingredients, eh? All of the wet ingredients. Then I'm just adding my sugar and my salt to my self-raising flour, mixing it all together like this. Just like that. Really? And that's it? That's it. It feels like we're missing something. I don't know it why. Does, right? It does, right? Because it's easy. It's that easy. Okay. And no one ever expects bread to be easy, but it is. All right. So all of this biltong, eh? Everything. Well, there we go. I was going to leave some for me, but it's fine. <laughs> Give us a good mix. Oh, that smells amazing. I mean, just the one thing about this, um, this the, 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 the aroma of this bread. I mean, can you imagine people just walking into your place, coming for a braai or a visit, and then smelling this? Oh, it's fantastic. Okay. And that's it. I'm done with my batter. Okay. I'm pour it into my already prepared bread pan. Jeez, I can't believe it's that easy. I really can't. But it's also about the ingredients that you use, and the chakalaka makes such a difference. It does. Yeah. It brings a flavour. Exactly that. Okay, so butter is mixed and done. And that's got a little bit of a garlic tinge in there as well. Bread's done. And we're popping this into the oven. All right, so what do we Easy. need to know? All right, you can pop it in the 40 oven. 40 to 45 bit. minutes at 170 degrees. And you'll have your bread. And it comes out looking like that. And magically we have... A beautiful baked one for us. You know it. So I see this one has been baked into a beautiful little round uh, gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> and it's beautiful. So you will just eat it with a butter just like that. And what would you pair it with? I like, would definitely pair it with some beer. Yeah. And a rugby game. Why not? I think it's <laughs> epic. Karen, thank you very, very much. I'm gonna dig in there just now. I appreciate it. And I can just just by the aroma itself, I can tell why this is a winning recipe. Definitely. Thanks for showing off today. <laughs> thank appreciate you so it. much. Um, entries are currently open and it really is so easy to get involved. All you have to do is take that video of yourself cooking a colorful meal using any Koo product, just like you've done this morning. And uh, it's an ingredient and you can say why you should be part of season three. Really that simple. WhatsApp that video to 072-741-5357. And also, if you want to get your hands on the recipe, it will be on our website, expressoshow.com. I'm going to dig in, for Amazing. sure. I'm taking it home. <laughs> Just pay me a piece. <laughs>
If your cooking makes you proud, then you might be Zanzi's next cooking star. To be a part of Color Your Plate with Ku on SABC2, show us how a healthier you starts with you and your tasty plate. Take a video of yourself creating a colorful meal and tell us why you should be Zanzi's next cooking star. WhatsApp your entry to 072-741-5357 and you could be on the new season. Plus, stand to win your share of prizes valued at 500,000 Rand. Color Your Plate with Ku. And I really do reiterate, enter, please. You can see what a difference it's made in Karen's life. So after the break, we're getting up close and personal with our furry friends. Yes, and a couple of friends from Tears as well. The Tears Sleepathon is coming. How can you get in on the act? And then we round off this incredible show today with another performance from El Andre. And he's going to perform Hunt on Hunt. An absolute beaut. Stick around. Look at it. Look at it. Facebook. Welcome back. Thank you so much for savoring the last few moments of this magical show with us. And it's about to get a whole lot cuter. If your idea of a perfect Saturday night involves cozying up with a blanket and some furry friends, oh, then you are in for a treat. Your early Christmas present, the annual Tears Sleepathon, is happening this November. And it's your opportunity to support one of the most incredible animal shelters here in the Western Cape and the people that work there as well. Definitely. And joining us this morning, we have to tell us more about the Sleepathon is Luke alongside Kelly and Katie alongside Nova. They are joining us today. Just to clarify, Luke and Katie are the humans. <laughs> <laughs> and the girls look beautiful. Are, are they up for adoption? They are. I shame they're desperate to find their forever homes. So. Uh, and they are Please. turning on the charm of fence this morning. <laughs> I love it. So, Luke, for the uninitiated, mm. uh, obviously we've had a front row seat to what you yeah. can do with these amazing sleepathons. This particular year got to be special because people want to embrace this opportunity. What's it all about? So the Sleepathon is an amazing event for folks who get involved with animals who are looking for homes and you need a bit of help and support. Um, and it's essentially a sleepover at the Tears Animal Rescue Shelter. So you'll spend a whole evening with rescue dogs or cats looking for homes. 
Yeah. Well, Katie, I believe Nova has a very special and unique story. Mm. Why would you encourage people to, to support shelters and, and organisations like Tears? Yes, well, Nova came to us. She was really um, severely um, emaciated and had terrible mange. And basically on death's door, her sibling had actually passed even. And someone brought her to us. Um, and for a little while, we didn't know if she was going to make it, and she did. And it's because we were available to help her with our clinic and with our staff and because the amazing community around us support us that, um, at that. that, that we can do that for dogs story? like Nova, yeah. Oh, well, well done. And Nova, well done to you, little girl. I don't think she's grown a skeleton yet. She just feels like a, like a lump of puppy. She is just so <laughs> relaxed and chilled. Lump These would make beautiful additions to anyone's home. Absolutely beautiful. They seem to have such a lovely nature, like so many of the dogs there. And often all it takes is just a moment of bonding, a connection, so you can see the personality of the dog. So... How do people get involved? How do we get tickets? And what's the spin-off for you? Because obviously this allows you to do some pretty cool stuff. Absolutely. So the Steve Fund essentially is a fundraising um, event for us. So you'll buy tickets. You can visit tears.org.za forward slash sleepathon to get your <laughs> tickets. And then you kind of go on a quest to raise funds to help animals like Nova. Um, we've got a huge veterinary clinic. So we do a lot of sterilizing, a lot of yeah. outreach work. And of course, we need funds to carry on doing that. And the more money our sleepathon is raised, and the more animals we can reach out and help. Amazing. And I know the sleepathon is over three Saturdays. So it's this coming Saturday, yeah. the 11th of November, the 18th of November, as well as the 25th of November. Still lots of dogs and cats with our cuddle buddies, so oh. get your tickets before uh, they all... Well, it's that. a dirty <laughs> trick, guys. It's a dirty <laughs> trick. Every time I film at Tears or any of these incredible organisations doing what you're doing, I come home with someone. Or I go back and start the bizarre process of being vetted, which <laughs> and I think when I did it with the last cat, my wife was convinced I was having an affair. With all these clandestine <laughs> meetings, I'd go to gym but not come back sweating. And she's like, what are you doing? What are you doing? She has a cat, babe. Um, <laughs> but, uh, and I love there are dogs and cats, which is really, really good. You need a chance to see these pups outside of their story. And I think it's important because people attach the trauma, they attach mm. the mange-ridden dog that they see there to their own potential pet, and that might be a barrier when it should actually be the opposite because they've proven what they can be as a companion. They've proven how strong they are. Why would you recommend, and maybe we can speak to both of you because your journeys through this organization have been very different. Why is it so important for people to plug in and experience this firsthand? I'll ask you first, Katie, because you are getting a double dose of love. <laughs> um, the thing for me that makes it so special is how resilient the animals are. Mm. Like a lot of the time people are like, how do you work here? How do you do this? Because it's so sad. And I say, well, I'm not going to let feeling sorry for them stop me from helping them. That's toxic. Because yeah. they don't feel sorry for themselves, you know. They'll, like, um, Kelly had a, a leg amputated because of an accident. And, like, within the next day or two, she's running around and playing again. Mm. You know, they don't feel sorry for themselves. They just want to live a happy, healthy life. And if we can provide that for them, then you see them blossom. And, like, even Kelly, I mean, mm. Nova here, when she came, she was like a shell of herself. She had no personality, nothing, because she was so unwell. And then as she gets better, you just see her blossom and you see her personality come out, and it's, it's really amazing. It's and, really and the nice thing, she morphs to your own body shape. So it doesn't matter <laughs> who you are, she will literally just morph into a cuddle buddy. Exactly. I love it. Oh. Can, can I quickly ask, oh, oh my look. gosh, if we look at your screen right now, you can see the early stages of Nova's journey. Oh. Oh, and bye to bye. see where she is now. Can we just quickly manage expectations with the sleepathon? Must I bring my own tent? Do I sleep under the stars? Do I sleep in a kennel? Like, please well, just... it's <laughs> entirely up to you. So, yeah, uh, camping comforts. So I'll definitely bring some stuff along. Um, definitely bring something to sleep on. Uh, we've got, we've had people in the past bring like yoga mats, blow up mattresses. Not a good idea. Always get <laughs> Not around dogs. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you want to put it to the test, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you can really also get a big dog bed because then you can kind of leave that behind for your cuddle buddy that you spend the night with. So yeah, something to sleep on, something to keep warm, um, dinner sorted. So we've got quite a big, um, it's like a whole festival almost before we lock everyone away for the night. So there's food and music and yeah, a real big community vibe. It's a really Aww. magical event. It's um, going to be yeah, magical. It's become clear because we obviously have a bird's eye view of how NGOs connect mm. to communities. And you guys have become... 
probably the most authentic representation of the communities where these dogs come from. You have built the trust with them to be able to facilitate the sterilizations, to be able to do that. So this isn't just a dog story. This isn't just a cat story. This speaks to how we see ourselves, how we appreciate life, how we value ourselves, our children, our community. Because when you get this right, you can see the change in young children, how they view themselves. Your family is ready to have a furry friend join it. It is just a matter of finding the right connection. So do something utterly awesome this yes. November. Come on, buy a ticket to, uh, without a doubt, the most fun sleepathon <coughs> in the world. Your donation, whether big or small, will make a massive difference. Look at the turnaround in Little Nova. That's what we're talking about. Maybe if you need an expression of resilience in your own life, it is waiting right there. Um, and of course, you will be feeding into the impact, impact-driven work, purpose-driven work that Tears do. And you can go to tears.org, .za to find out more and see pictures of the pups that are up for adoption because there are so many just like these gorgeous ladies that are ready yes. and waiting. Absolutely love it. Tears, thank you so much. Yes, it is. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, reminder that that happens this weekend, but before the weekend even comes through, we've got something that's taking place this week and ends on Friday. Yes, the summer always wants to show you, just wants you to show them your energy, your spark, and your confidence, and you could be a part of their next re-denim campaign. Yes, they are looking for real people. So this is your chance to show South Africa what makes you, you. Now applications are now officially open and what you gotta do is upload a video of yourself that best demonstrates your confident react show them attitude to TikTok using the hashtag react show them and of course tagging Woolworths underscore SA. Now to qualify for an entry, you need to ensure that the post and upload is public or submit your entry via our dedicated WhatsApp line. And that's to the following number. The number is 71 295 -1485. After that, you just want to simply follow all the prompts to submit your entry. As simple as that. Now, don't forget the entries do close on five, well, this, this Friday, 5 p.m., Friday the 10th of November. Your T's and C's can be found on expressoshow.com, but what are you waiting for? They're looking for your beauty, your magic, and your expertise. Bring it on. <laughs> Maybe it's your ability on the keys or your singing voice. And because of the success of Alandre and my first single this morning, we've released another hunt on hunt. Now, Alandre is sticking around. He is here to round off this magical show with another beautiful performance. You do not want to miss a second. We'll see you now.
Welcome back. You're just in time. Now, if you're feeling lucky, your Monday could start off on a winning note. Now, today's Daily Lotto has an estimated jackpot of 430,000 Rand. How incredible is that? That could be half a mil in your pocket. I'll take it. Mm. I'll take it right now. And in fact, there are multiple ways that you can earn your tickets, okay? So first up, yeah, you can purchase one in store, really easy. You can go to nationallottery.co.za, that's their website. You can use their mobile app, which works really well. Cell phone banking, um, there's a tag probably on your own app already. And you can simply dial star 120 star 7529 hash for the USSD. Oh, can you just picture 430,000 mm. Rand in your account? How would you spend that? I would go on a holiday with my kids. Oh. I would do a very luxurious holiday with my family. Undoubtedly, oh, man. yes. Oh. I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll add to that. I think after the year we've had, I need a proper oh, holiday. Girl. A honeymoon over five months. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a, a big honeymoon. Now, we all have all of these details on of our social pages, so go and check them out if you've missed any of these. But that is where you can get your hands on your ticket to win that estimated value jackpot of 430,000 rand. Oh, from half a million to a million. Let's make you feel like a million bucks right now with another performance. Oh, yes, Samsanzi, welcome back to it. After that incredible performance, <laughs> it's time for another. We're still joined with the talented singer-songwriter, Elandre in the building, and he's made a big comeback with his fourth studio album, Aesthetica. I'm absolutely loving what I'm hearing already, but I want to talk about more of this, man. It's been absolutely incredible seeing you come onto the stage, seeing you share your talent. That performance was incredible. But there's been a bit of a break that happened before this all. You took two years out to kind of just obviously take a break and tap into more of that creativity. What was the reason for that choice? I think 2020 and 2021 really limited us with, with performance and stuff yeah. like that. It feels like an age ago, but I, I think after that, my, I set out to tour again. I miss the stage very much. And, mm. and as someone who started in musical theater and started in like bars and gigging, that's where I live. And the and I mean, energy you get from that as well. Absolutely. Eh? I miss that very much. And uh, I wrote an entire album called Rikhsak in, in lockdown. And when we got the chance, we toured that for the last two years. And uh, I think it was a healthy break from the pen, you know. It's a very self-analytic uh, tool sometimes. Mm. But um, I think touring helps me find inspiration so I can go sit down again with a pen like I did. And um, yeah, I'm, I've got a great <laughs> impeccable band to thank you for, for, for helping me stay stay on top of it and being able to be creative, you know, they help me get to the pen. Yeah, I think it is always the people that are around you that kind of assist in lifting you up and you become a part of that at the same time. And you become a part of something bigger as well. Yeah. Uh, you had an incredible experience of this. There was an event, uh, part of the Corona by Lotus 2023. Dude, this was insane. Over 35,000 people attended. You have a 360 degree stage. That's like superstar status right there. How do you not like just pinch yourself in that moment? <laughs> what was that like for you? If, if you, you know what, I really think there were a couple of moments in that evening where I pinched myself and thought, yo, this is pretty big. But um, then you look left and you look right and it's your colleagues that you've been working with uh, for quite some your time. So you're like, you mean, sir. yeah, you yeah. feel like you're all in it together. It feels like you, we're all like hitting it big, you know? It was quite an experience and, and I think it was probably the biggest playground that I've ever been on. Um, to work with all those lights, sound, and all those people. It, it's, it's a once-in-a-lifetime thing for me. So I don't know when it's going to happen again, but uh, I made the most of it. That Brother, I, I feel like it's just beginning. Even though you're taking a break, I think it's to prepare yourself for what's happening for this year and the next year. It's going to be huge. Your voice is incredible. I feel like every time you perform now, you are just entering your flow state. So I'm going to let you do that once again, because ladies and gentlemen, this is Landry performing a track titled Hunt on Hunt. And of course, brother, the stage is yours. <laughs> Good morning. 
much. <laughs> Absolutely beautiful. So from that beautiful voice to a little voice note that uh, Cecile, I think, sent in. I think she wants to connect with you, Zoe. Let's Thank go. Thank you. Morning, Cecile. Good morning, Express Show. I just want to say to Zoe, Zoe, you look absolutely gorgeous today. Uh, Keep it up. Oh, uh, well, she well, the nice does, thing though. is... She does. You <laughs> voted for this outfit. Exactly. Thank I know. You. I was going to say she doesn't have a choice. That's kind of how she was built. <laughs> but um, you played Her a big part. Up. So thank you. Your mm. style is impeccable. Um, and it does really underpin what the show is all about. It's 99.9% you okay the rest we'll just layer in as best we can so thank you for your contribution this morning and every day we'll do it all over again tomorrow don't forget how much we love you love you another feel good production Oh, welcome back to the Mzanzi and let's carry on just spoiling you. I think the entire world right now and everybody that's listening has got every reason to celebrate because those first two performances were just incredible and it carries on right now. And of course, we are here with Ilandre, the man who has been sharing his talent, sharing his gifts and doing so much. And if you didn't even figure it out by now, there is an album out. It's Aesthetica. And the man's on a tour. We're loving it. But bro, plug us in because I think after these performances, everybody wants to see a, a live piece of you and actually see you in the flesh where can they do that where you're performing and where you're taking this tour uh, we kicked the tour off in Stellenbosch and then we moved to Atterbury Theatre in Pretoria and okay. that was pretty incredible and we topped that off with a tour kickoff um, at Buttstall in Pretoria so we, we started it there and now we are moving up in the north until December December we're hitting the coast we're going up the garden route and then we're heading to Durban we're hitting KZN and the next year we're going <laughs> back to Gauteng early next year and then we're coming back all the way to Cape Town in March, oh. July, between March, June and July. I love that. So, yeah, it's pretty crazy. South man. Africa can get a piece of you. Listen, bro, you've come back. You are slaying. You've got new music. There's so much happening. I dare even ask this, but what's next? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take it album by album for yeah. now, man. Um, I think as long as music's with me, I'm busy enough, you know. I'm grateful to be able to tour with, with amazing musicians and work with great people and to be able to speak about the wonderful thing called music. So thank you for this moment and oh, thanks for everyone attending the tour. Appreciate it's it. an absolute pleasure. And just seeing this face, the way it lights up, especially when you're about to perform, this is what it is made of. Mzadzi, one last time, performing a track from his new album. This is an exclusive coming from the album Estetica. And this is a song called In Me Ua. Brother, take it away. All die dinge daar boe, kan nie help as jy beweeg, raak kyk boe, woe, wat? Thank you. 